Brian, you would be one of the people. If this ends up happening in the future, you would be revived by Sukasa, so don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, okay, dude. I'm yeah. pretty sure I can't beat a line with my bare fist. <laughs> okay. hey, I mean, have, you ever, have, have you ever tried, though? So yes. <laughs> I don't think I'll be able to. <laughs> uh, you just got to believe. You just got to believe, man. <laughs> yeah, dude, just let me power up real quick. You want there you go. Start giving one. Yeah, one year after post COVID, and we'll, we'll see, Brian. Yeah. Yeah, you, you go back to the B status, I believe. So they just throw me into like a gorilla pit or something to see if I can last. <laughs> no, we'll see if the gorilla can last. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Welcome to the Anime Izuka Podcast, week three of the winter 2020, 2021 season. On this show, we'll be discussing the current season anime airing every week. I'm your host, David, and joining me today, we have Shren. Hello. Next up, we have Ku. Yo. Next up, we have Justin. Hey, everyone. And finally, we have Taylor. Hello. All right. Um, so I guess only one quick news of, of anime this week. Um, the the Snafu game, whatever that's supposed to be, I guess they're airing with OVA. That ships with it too, so we'll see how that you goes. You know, version novel. <laughs> Probably, yeah. I don't know. I don't. They said it was like some sort of like sequel, or whatever. So, but I don't know how canon it'll be. So we'll see. But yeah, it, it's fine. If, if that game ever actually comes here, I'm gonna do just the Yui and Iroha route, oh. the true route. No, okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> whatever. So we'll see how. And we, but if there's a if there's a teacher route, then whew, we'll see. That might the that might be the, we'll the game changer. So <laughs> we'll see what whatever happens with that. So that's the only any news we have this week. Uh, we're jumped into a Jutsu Kaisen. And I was just want to say shout out to Ku's boy Toto. This him Toto, and, him and Yuji man. Oh Came my god, friendship bond. This, this is why I'm uh. saying he's my new favorite character, bro. Like, how do you how do you come across a guy that's so perfect in every way? I just <laughs> I just can't. <laughs> Like I was kind of hoping that uh, like this moment would happen, right? Just because uh, like they they referenced Jennifer Lawrence like a while back in episode one or two, and then the fact that they brought back that little tidbit saying that I was the type <laughs> of woman that he liked, and they became the best of bros. Oh my god, it's it's fucking amazing. And it looks like he found a new teacher in a sense because it looks like mm -hmm. uh, Toto is going to teach uh, Yuji as to how to uh, better implement his curse energy techniques or whatever. He wants the full yeah. potential out of them when they fight. Right. Exactly. He wants a worthy opponent that's going to push him to the limit as well. So, yeah. So that should be pretty hype, I think. But uh, yeah, dude, fucking best, <laughs> one of the best five minute <laughs> moments of this show so far. Yeah, it's it pretty funny. <laughs> I it guess, awesome. Besides that, it's like it's just basically uh, just the setup for the tournament. I I didn't expect them to jump on UG right away, and then mm -hmm. a little bit of a surprise, yeah. Yeah. So, but besides that, it's just, I don't know, there's nothing, I don't have much to say, just because, like, it just, it feels like the standard, like, tournament um, set up, so. It does, which I mean, I'm fine with it. Yeah. I mean. Can we, can we still even call it a tournament, though? I, I, I mean. Think we're it, better off just call it, like, yeah, an event. Like it's a exactly, event. it's like a trial event. Yeah, I just, right. I keep saying tournament because it's what the show says, but it is. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not, not a tournament. tournament. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> like unless they do uh like a, like a finals uh like a bracket finals later where it's one on one fighting or two on two or whatever, um mm -hmm. it's I you really can't see like them calling this or classifying it as a tournament. So yeah, yeah, it's more like an exam. So I guess we should probably say that going forward. Mm -hmm. But yeah, what uh what did you guys think about like kind of the rundown of like everybody's powers that they kind of hinted at this episode from the Kyoto school. Were there any that you thought like, okay, like this is pretty cool or any that was just like, eh, it's kind of whatever. Or, I mean, I know we haven't seen it any, enough. I but... don't remember any of them. Honestly. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember the abilities <laughs> or if anything was shown. It's yeah. Not... So oh, I go ahead, David. I've always felt with Jujutsu Kaisen that like, I, I don't think too hard about people's abilities. Cause I feel mm -hmm. like they're really over the top and kind of, they're kind of like flexible for whatever they need in the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. and I, and normally that really, really bothers me, but for this show, I just don't care. And I just roll with it. So I it, like, yeah. if you were to ask me what anybody's powers was, it would take me a hot second to think about yeah. it. And, and I think I kind of expected that as a loaded question. Cause even from what I remembered, like, 
We have the like mecha wood guy who literally I think just fires like flames from his hand or like a hand cannon type technique that he used once. Um, mm -hmm. And then um, Which places what? Yeah, so that was the one thing I was going to mention is, oh, yeah. you know, how that happened with Toto just using like an OP ability that was, you know, not shown on screen. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> Man got a clap, you know, <laughs> right? <laughs> doesn't like really fit in with his theme. Like, mm -hmm. it's not something I would have thought, yeah, that guy can like teleport or something. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. And then I feel like I guess they didn't really show anything regarding the witch girl that was just like flying above the scene to like give reconnaissance on where everybody is. So I'm right. sure next week's episode we'll probably get more inside there. Um, and then I guess the only other one that they kind of hinted at was the girl with the blue hair that has like the samurai sword. And she was going to use like a sword domain t technique on Yuji. And then Something Yuji like that, just completely yeah. like dodge mm -hmm. rolled it like it was nothing. So. I want to yeah. say it's kind of a, a weaker version of uh, Gojo's Infinity Void because mm -hmm. uh, she kind of set up her zone and whatever's in that zone is a lot slower compared to her reaction speed. But mm -hmm. Yuji was still able to dodge it. So yeah. I think it's just like a weaker version of Gojo, which would explain why she likes Gojo so much is because he's kind of the next tier of what mm -hmm. she aspires to be. So I thought that was pretty interesting. And, you know, I, the, did did you like the, the right. Juju stroll then at the end of this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was... <laughs> The I ship is happening, guys. The ship is about to happen. Mm -hmm. It was like, oh, yeah, that's right. Kind of too big, but whatever. It's Japan. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a topic for another podcast. Though. Okay. So we'll, I mean, we'll, thing, we'll leave it at that. That little, that little thing at the end, though, I mean, is it actually legit? Or were they just having fun with it? Was it for the fans? Uh, probably like, uh, it sounds, it sounds probably like a bit of both. It might be like, one of those omakes okay, okay. from the manga, but I don't know if even those are canon because those are usually for fun. Yeah. I think the one thing I kind of didn't like about it was where, you know, I would have assumed that the blue haired girl's affection with Gojo would be very one sided. And then in the stroll, he was like, oh, I like her, too. Like, she's the only one that I really like. And I was kind of mm. like, oh, that's kind of lame in a sense. <laughs> like, I did not expect Gojo to be like, oh, yeah, I like this girl. I think he was throwing her a bone. Yeah. Could be. I mean, I was. I think it was also something that I just like wasn't expecting. I think I was, I was like, like assuming more of a Gojo kind of a typical response mm -hmm. where it, it just kind of like or like most like anime characters where they just completely miss the point and then it's just something else randomly it's like okay dude that's yeah definitely not even like in the ballpark oh yeah for sure that's what i was kind of more expecting but i also like the was it the the chick that that gojo was hanging out with where just like like all the chicks love gojo and this chick just absolutely hates him <laughs> like just yeah. can't stand the guy i'm hoping we get more uh backstory there in yeah. terms of like you know did they just go through school like together and that's why they hate each other because gojo just always is <laughs> trolling her and like putting her in a bad light or mm. what kind of is you know that relationship at a deeper at a deeper level i'm still waiting for more information on the panda <laughs> I just oh, I know, right? that's all how? Stern cares about just the panda. Yes. how we're gonna go says, badass at some point never has a show like. story that's all Stern's cared about so yeah but i feel it's, you. it's fair <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and I, and I and I still enjoy how they basically didn't even like really work on a name. They're just like we're just gonna call him Panda. It's like, <laughs> okay. I, yeah. I respect that. That's fine. Mm. Um, I did like though when uh the Panda guy and then the other girl who uses like the hammer and nails were walking up to the witch girl that was in the tree, and they were like you know kind of uh provoking her like, hey, come out and play, mm -hmm. and she's just like, ah. Oh, like, yeah, it's so crass. I'm pretty yep. sure that her character design wasn't... I, I could be wrong. I have to double check it. But I'm pretty sure her character design was inspired by Kiki's Delivery Service. Because there's another girl that's in Kiki's Delivery Service that's, like, identical to her. Which I thought was kind of cool. And they have the same kind of s snotty personality. <laughs> Didn't even see it, but I got those vibes. Yeah, same. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, same here. Yeah. Same. Uh, yeah. No, I, I did. You know, you, you, see, you see that everywhere uh, for, like, with it. For the show, and I, I'm like, that, that's that seems like it's got to be something like that because they do a lot of like, uh, was it? Um, I, I guess we can call it maybe shout outs of like other shows, references. other people, Easter eggs. references. Yeah, I don't know why. How is <laughs> yeah, it? cameos, Easter eggs. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, well, the rings Wait, so has there been have any cameos though? What has there been like actual like, cameos like of Thanks. stuff or things? No, I don't think so. Mm, no, other than, other than Jennifer Lawrence, that's probably the only actor. Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> only in words. They didn't yeah. say yeah. Sam. The poster. Or, they didn't say Sam or Frodo, but it was on the TV, so it's good enough for me. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Uh, yeah. yeah, 
No, I just like how like the the show kind of throws tidbits at you, and it makes you kind of pay attention a little bit. So if you do pay attention, you're kind of rewarded with these little like. Mm -hmm. So I think that's pretty exactly. Nice. I love the, the comedy of the show is so good too. Yeah, yeah, I like it too. It's really fast paced. Like there was a comment that um I can never remember her name, K K K Kagasaki, something like that. Um, the girl with the hammer and nails. She was mm -hmm. she was talking about oh. like you know, the blue hair girl and, oh, are you getting along okay there? Because that one sister is super mean. It was like, it, it went by really fast. I don't remember yeah. any names ever, but if you were looked away for a second or weren't paying attention, you just miss it entirely. But it was character development. Mm -hmm. Oh, so, yeah. yeah, for definitely. sure. I think, uh, too, I'm kind of interested in seeing um, the other guy from the Kyoto team who's part of, like, one of the three, like, special families or whatever, who has, like, the bow and then I think he oh. had, like, the two, like, wooden, like, ninja. Oh, yeah. Things. Oh, the head family. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I forget. I can't remember his name for the life of me. But the blind um, guy is he blind or deaf? One of them, or I don't think he's blind. I think he's yes. just getting the, the the Brock eye treatment. You know, yeah, like, yeah. very very exactly. Yeah. Like how, for me, I, so, I immediately go like, if they have like that good hearing, I just assume like that guy's blind. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know, like, because all we've seen is just he has different weapons. So. But mm -hmm. I would right. hope his you know ability or whatever it's going to be is going to be much more kind of involved if he's coming from you know this special family um similar to the uh fushiguro from the uh, tokyo side i oh, mean yeah. i'm so mostly interested in, in megami just because like because uh Tsukunda is interested in him so i want to know like what what does he see in megami and mm. we're gonna see that uh that potential power come out soon definitely mm. I, I, yeah i completely forgot about that yeah so i don't know I think that, that'll be it for this week. So um, I guess a good start to the exam or battle they're having. And hopefully we see good more more action this, this episode, which is good. So I guess if it just gets, stay consistent on the action, we should be fine. So maybe. And then maybe after this, this I don't know if they're going to do like more of the story with the like the, the demons or the curse like energies. But we'll see. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. So, yeah, so that'll be it for um, Jutsu Kaisen. Now we'll head over to uh, Promised Neverland. And then I guess two main things happen to, towards this. I guess well, two main things I want to talk about. Like, there's one at the later part, but the first part, I think I think I want a uh, shout out to, I think, was it Sasha? Did you predict that um, Sonju was like not really the type of person we should trust? Because when he revealed that he wanted to eat all the kids, eventually eat the humans, I was like, whoa, I was not expecting this, this turn of events here. Like, I don't know. Was it just me or... either? Okay. Uh, I don't know if I predicted that. I just said, you know, this man gonna die. <laughs> oh. So, yep. Mm. Okay. I thought someone. I thought someone predicted it last week, but I was not expecting that change of like. I don't know if it's change of character, but like I was not. That threw me off so much. When he you have to. Hey man, he he had his reasons, right? That's like he just he's just a naturalist, you know. He's like, oh, I don't like this farm bred meat. Give me the natural shit. It feels very mm -hmm. weird. It's like no? it's like a vegan saying like, "Oh, like I can't eat like farm grown meat, but if it's natural and I hunt it myself, that's perfectly fine." It's just it feels so well, contradictory. If you think about it in the lens of like supposedly this is this is still because of his religion, isn't it? Like they're allowed to eat the food that is hunt. naturally raised. Yeah, I mean, or, I think it definitely is I mean. a part of it, but then it's like at the end of the day, just instinctual. He's probably just more so being like, "All right, like." Yeah. This is what we do. So I won't be like the other demons who, you know, are eating this farm raised food. I'll eat the descendants of these kids that are, as Brian said, more natural. And that's fair game for me. I have no problems with that. It uh, made me really sad. Like when he smiled and he had all the teeth and he looked so <laughs> evil. I was like, no, I, mean, I fell for that's the, the thing. <laughs> yeah, you become too comfy. And then it's like, nope, a demon's uh, a demon at the end of the yeah. day. I just think it as like an organic diet per se. Like everything's organic, so yeah. Good. Damn. I, I did just great like how they showed how badass he is too when he went back and oh, yeah. met with the pursuers yes. and just dismantled the shit out of him. Like, so he yeah. he just he just likes to fight and he wants to eat. Oh. Interesting, but it it seems like the girl really uh, has no interest in that at all. Seems like mm -hmm. she really did grow close to them and would like to be friends, and she probably should have just gone with them to help them to help protect them. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, she's yeah, probably his still... cousin. <laughs> Taylor, it just sound right. your your voice. It sounds like you're still shaken up by the revelation. I was so shaken up, and then I went and told Stratton about it, and he was like, "Well, they're demons, right?" And I was like, "But yeah, but they have a different religion." He's like, "Didn't this one was call different this last week?" <laughs> 
That's what they all say. <laughs> maybe, you know, yeah, I don't know who called it then, because I don't remember saying it, but okay. maybe it was. I'm not, Martin I, called it. He doesn't even watch the damn oh, show, but he called it. He did? God damn it. That's the worst. He said Brian called it. Oh, did Brian call it? Well, props to Brian then. Hey, didn't even know I did that. Uh, okay. Dude, that's the best. <laughs> but that's like I gotta the... say, um, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, like, this whole show or this whole episode gave me the vibes where you knew something bad was gonna happen. And I'm talking about A, the ending, and then B, obviously Jericho Legolas, you know, <laughs> committing to killing kids. Um, because Game of Thrones did the similar thing where, like, the, the episode that starts off the like the lightest. And it soothes you and eases you into this lulled sense of just, oh, this is so lighthearted and nice. And they're finally not struggling. Bam, bam. They all die at the end. So um, I just had a feeling. I'm like, I think this episode's starting off too nice for us. And so when he cracked that grin and was like, I'm going to eat them. I like them kids. Yeah. I was like, okay. And just wait. It's it's going to go. They're going to find something nice, such as the shelter. And then they're gonna find some of the messed up. So, uh, so that's what yes. I was gonna bring up too. The second part is like the big other big revelation. This episode was, I mean, I was thinking that too. Like when they found the shelter, I was like, wow, this is so convenient. Like, what's gonna go wrong here? And then we find like the we find the help sign. And you know how like you and Taylor were saying how I think we we're all out saying how we we kind of missed season one where with the tension with the house. I think now it's we're where I get that back with this shelter and like the mystery behind. Like William Minerva and all that, so. Yep, I agree. I I was actually a little bit surprised that at least like Emma or Ray, neither one of them went down there and was like, "This seems too convenient. <laughs> like this seems mm -hmm. like a perfect setup. How does this exist? I mean, everything seems pretty well sur surveyed in the area. It seems unlikely that this huge shelter could exist without anybody knowing about it. Like I'm getting some lost vibes where it's like. Where the Dharma Initiative was setting up like stations around the island, telling people they have to follow these rules, and but the experiment was really just to see if the people follow the rules year after year. Like I'm picturing some sort of like weird mental game here, but probably not. They mostly just want to eat them. But that's what I would like because, as David said, that was fun from the first season. Yeah, it's definitely picking up. I got those vibes. I got I got a hot take for you guys. This is me Go going in that direction again. All right, let's hear it. All right, Doctor Minerva, demon. Doctor Minerva, spoiler alert, but not spoiler alert because I've never read the manga. He is the creator of that religion that they have to abide by, and oh. hmm. a sick, twisted piece of me thinks that he wants the top of the top, like the smartest kids who are able to pick up on his clues to escape from the farm. And he leads them here after they think they've gotten away as the ultimate, like, nah, nah, I got the best, the best, and I'm going to eat them. With That's actually a really good idea. Dude, like, uh... I had that thought, too, that he was actually, like, orchestrating all this, too. It, it wasn't as in-depth as yours, but <sighs> he's got to be evil. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's kind of similar to, like, uh, what's that series called? I think Maze Runner. I know the oh, movies yeah. aren't that great, but from a novelist perspective, it's kind of a similar, like, you get out of one, like, mm -hmm. situation, and you think, oh, I'm good, and it's like, Nope, this is just another layer to the mystery or to the depression of the current world, whatever it may be. Actually, so. now, now that Sash said that, because because the the sign said help, I wonder if he did that with other farms too. Then he he put clues in the other farms and let kids to that area just so we can like like feast on them later. So cause that's where I'm thinking now too. Yeah, it's hard to say, but it always feels like, I mean, from all the other shows that I've watched where they have a similar setup, you know, there's supposed to be a sanctuary or a safe haven or something. They always end up being cannibals or other having other problems. It's always something. Yeah, yeah. I think I could definitely see it, too, with just how they were showing all the kids now being happy of like, oh, we can finally, you know, stop being on the run for a little bit. They have water. They have a garden and. You know, I think even the one kid starts crying when they're in the, the bathroom or whatever, the sauna area. And he's just like, I don't even know why I'm crying. Like, we weren't gone for that long, but he's just happy, you know, to finally not be stressed and running mm -hmm. for his life. Dude, he going to be crying. Thing. Next episode. Yeah, he's yeah continue gonna that. <laughs> he's going to have tears in his eyes. Like, my gosh, I'm scared. He's going to feel an alien tongue lick his tears this like a carpet <laughs> in South Park. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh, Wrap God. around his head, take his head off, or something. Yeah, that's so, my prediction. So I'm, I mean, I'm thinking like, 
I think like the whole like entire shelter is like bugged with security cameras or something. So now we gotta do like, the whole like more of the the mind games where like, now we have to do all this in secret, like without saying anything because you're being watched all the time. So I'm very like I'm if they go that direction, I'm looking forward to more mind games again. So again, like similar to season one. So I'm I'm really excited for where this this go. Like I actually like having them being in the shelter and having an idea like maybe they have to escape from the shelter eventually. I agree. Agreed. I thought the last episode was um so episode two, I'm like, okay, we needed that episode to set things up for the rest of the story. But I thought this upcoming episode that just happened, I thought, you know what, this is either gonna dial up the interest a lot or it's gonna keep it somewhere level where you're like, All right, I kinda of feeling this, but I'm more watching it just because the first season. But now I, I'm very, very invested into the season yeah. and I'm, I'm glad they got to the bunker within this immediate yep. episode. It wasn't another episode of like, hey, we got out of the forest, but now we're in this big desert wasteland and we had to watch them, you know. Mm-hmm navigate that area there's like nope we got yeah it could easily just been like another episode of them like just continuing in the forest or being lost or doing that five was it five day journey or whatever so that was Mm -hmm. really nice well promise neverland's always been pretty good at that it's always had very good pacing it's one of the things i like a lot about the show yeah but it was still like there it was all in like the house area so like you didn't know whether what they were gonna go with like the outside world Mm -hmm. because so much of it was unknown compared to like you know we know what this house in like the yard looks like Mm-hmm. I am very curious to see that underground tunnel that's mm-hmm. behind, like the piano, where that leads to, and who's coming in that way. Oh, because oh, right, I like, forgot about that. Because Jericho oh, Legolas, how, you wouldn't be able to sleep like that, knowing that there were tunnels connecting to the. Bo- I couldn't sleep knowing that. Like that would freak me out so bad. Yeah, I, I wouldn't yeah. be able to. I probably just hug the strongest kid there and be like, "Hey, I'm really scared. I just want to sleep with you." I'm like, "Carry yeah. me, carry me." I think get if they were finding like these hidden tunnels and like the help me room at like different times because it felt like they never came together. And we're like, "Hey," but so maybe next week's episode, you know, they'll all be like, "All right, we have the help me room, we have the piano room, and we have this telephone call or whatever." But yeah, so 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 a lot of set up for next week's episode. So. <laughs> So we'll glorious see. yes so we'll see what we'll, what discussion we'll have for next week's episode where they decide to show us uh we went over to higurashi and this week i didn't watch this week's episode because i forgot so i need ku and taylor to carry my sorry ass so have had it i know you've been wanting to talk about this one for several days ku so i will let you lead oh yeah so man this this episode started off with such a gross moment like if you're into gore, this was oh I can't because I was I was I was eating while I was watching this and oh. yeah I completely forgot. Seems and, to be a common thing for a common issue for you for the show. Right. <laughs> and because I didn't think that they were just gonna start out with that, right? Usually they build up to these kind of moments. But uh from the get-go, since this is um Rika's last loop or attempt, um it looks like they're just uh rushing towards the part where she would reset the world and basically in this uh in this loop she wakes up and she's already uh pretty much dead uh so toko was possessed this time and she already did the deed with uh, rika uh, apparently she already disemboweled her in a sense or like ripped open her guts and she went to go grab one of those ceremonial tools which is uh what would you call that like like a hole i guess um yeah, it's some sort of a blade that's in there too. Yeah, she was just going at it with with, uh, with Rika's guts, trying to cleanse her for her sin. And ooh, man, the first ten, five, ten minutes of this show or this episode was just just horrible. I just, I just couldn't really watch. But then we finally figured out like why she was being uh, cursed this way, I guess. Uh, so I don't know if it's canon or not, but uh, apparently in one of the loops of a hundred years that she's been doing this there was actually a scenario where everyone was saved and instead of staying in the village she actually ran away and apparently because of that uh you know how they mentioned that she was just brought back all of a sudden back to the village uh apparently it was the the spirit that brought her back and it was very mad at her so it just basically kept repeating the loop mm-hmm. um so yeah we're just getting more tidbits about uh why this is happening to her and it looks like it was resolved, but it looks like the arc is continuing and something is about to go down with the next episode. But so, um, 
Yeah, that 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 arc that you're talking about where they did get their problem solved at one point, that would be the second season of the original Higurashi, so Higurashi Kai. Okay, so it's not something original, right? It's something that was actually aired in okay. Yep, yep, it aired. Um okay. I mean I'm assuming at least that's what she's talking about from what they showed. Yeah, seem, seems to add up. Um but I, thought, but I thought you said you didn't know about it. Or no, the about, arc where, about the arc or the loop that she was actually uh, they were actually able to save everyone, and she left the village. I know about the saving people thing. I didn't know about her leaving the village. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah. And I don't know if that's because I didn't, like, watch that episode or whatever. All I remember was them explaining what happened in the village, but nothing about her leaving it. Hmm. Okay. So that might be new to this season, or it might be there's so much stuff out there, I might have missed it. Could be either one, but... um. Right. Yeah, I'm not really sure where they're going to go after this. It was pretty, it was, it was, you know, I was okay with the opening. It didn't, it didn't, it didn't shock me too bad. I was able to get through it, but then she brought out that ceremonial tool and that got a little bit tougher. And then she started, you know, grabbing it, just manually pulling things out. <laughs> that's, that's what got me. That's, I gotta what say, got me. that's where I, that's where I had to tap out. <laughs> like, oh, that man. got a little bit brutal. Because I was eating brats with rice, right? Oh, my and, God. And I had a brat my, and my fork, and I was like, ugh. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Poor this choice. Is not, this is not good. But, Only spaghetti uh, probably could have been worse. <laughs> true. Or lasagna. Oh, God. Oh, if it was man. lasagna, uh, I'd be fucked. <laughs> what about Yeah, no, pie? like, I was I was doing fine. I was doing fine the whole the whole way until uh, she started just, like, slowly pulling out her, her large intestines out, and I was like, oh, Ooh, that's not, just not sitting there time. shaking his head. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah. And also in this episode, uh, what, what seems to work for Rika and why things are looking more positive is because um, Satoko basically explained to her that Oyashiro Sama is upset with her for leaving and she apologizes. And then she, I guess, manages to convince herself that she's happy in the village after all and she apologizes to Oyashiro Sama like in spirit she doesn't physically do anything but like internally she apologizes and decides she wants to stay in the village mm-hmm. and i don't quite understand how that fits in <laughs> with everything that's happening so i'm curious to see where it goes from there i really have no clue well i know how you mentioned before that uh i guess this was really m- meant to be watchable a standalone without having any knowledge of the previous seasons that's but, what i've heard yeah i feel like that's not the case uh yeah, i agree you, you really need to have watched the the previous two seasons mm-hmm. to kind of understand everything that they're throwing at you mm-hmm. um and as of right now i thought i was going to be satisfied with how they're going to end this arc but yeah with, with the whole i don't even know what to call it with the fact that she was kind of like bullied and forced into the situation and now she just had to accept it and be happy with the the cards that she's dealt. It it feels like it's just really rough for for mm-hmm. someone like Rika. And I I seriously doubt that this was the main cause as to why she was chosen to be like the the respawn of the of the spirit or why she's only going through it at all. And uh, yeah, I just I just feel really bad and I just don't agree with it. But then again, it is Japanese anime, so that's just kind of normal, right? Someone just has bad luck and that's just how well, it is i don't think that i don't know you know at the, i think it was the end of this episode right she talked to um that blonde chick the one that's in a relationship with the photographer guy the next um step. yeah and she was like we need to talk and mm-hmm. that i mean she, i i don't want to get into it because it'd be giving some stuff away but i'm really hoping that that when they talk, it will fill in some stuff um, that explains, again, a little bit more lore about the village because that lady is very important. And um, I'm hoping that it will tie together some of the stuff that, I mean, we, we've heard a lot about it. We're familiar with the terminology, but we don't really know what's factual and what's not. For example, like, is there some sort of parasite or are there demons that are actually inhabiting people? What causes them to scratch themselves? Um, what, you know, there's just a lot of threads that have started that i feel like you guys have no way of knowing like how much of each of it is true you know what i mean oh yeah um and i'm really hoping that some of that will get addressed in this next episode because i think that it would explain like i'm confused as to why this is just suddenly okay like the village is saved now that she apologized from what i know that shouldn't be 
all that it takes. And then um, you'll be able to come up with some more theories, I think, and be a little bit happier at the ending if you can just learn that little bit about the nurse, I guess. Oh, no, I gave up on the whole happy ending thing. I'm pretty sure at the end of every loop, it's just going to be some kind of fucked up death. There was a happy ending at one point, the end of the second original season. Oh, okay. Uh, Ish. I mean, you know, it's answers. Yes. Well, based on what they've shown us so far, it looks like everything that's leading up to this specific uh, moment at the episode, it's kind of what happened in the second season as well, like the original loop. But since you're following like a multiverse, right? Like there's never really two exact same universe. Uh, I wonder and at this point where you saw that flashback where the uh, the blonde chick and the photographer was hugging each other and that's when the uh, like the village was saved. I wonder if it's going to cut up to that point and then something terribly wrong is going to happen where it splits it off again. Could be. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure something fucked up is going to happen, but I, I just have no idea. We'll find out. Yeah, but uh, man, just whew, it's it was a good episode. Yeah, they're definitely not holding back on the gore anymore. <laughs> yeah, usually they 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 make it very <laughs> sudden or, or or quick, you know. But they really drew out this uh, this uh, torture sequence. Yeah, torture, right? And mm-hmm. I was I was actually a little shocked, but mm-hmm. uh, again, I think it's nice how they can just change the pace every now and then, kind of just make keep it fresh in a sense. Yeah, David, this is this scene is worse than the scene that you think of when you watch those top 10 most horrific okay. scenes in anime. This, this one was worse than what you're thinking of. Uh, I, look forward so. <laughs> I don't see how if this is like as bad or not as bad as the originals, I don't see how you guys could have watched the originals and finished this, uh, the series because, man, this is rough. I thought like the original stuff that was happening in like episodes 1 through 15 or whatever was bad. But man, this one a cake and if that was the light side of higurashi i don't know if i ever want to watch the originals mm-hmm. to be honest because that shit's rough man it yeah. doesn't even phase me i grew up watching scary <laughs> movies this stuff is fine <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not the gore but it's just these these, it's just these little kids you know it's it's fun. i think to me i can't handle it if it happens to like kids because it's just mm-hmm. unfair right if it happened to a bunch of adults it's, it's whatever you know you split the full life you know that's that's on you <laughs> yeah. but yeah when it happens to a bunch of like teenage or like preteen kids like that's just rough you know it's an animal to be protected at least there's nothing happening to animals like as soon as they start hurting animals in this anime then i'm out like i can't handle okay. that <laughs> all right this might be a different topic but why is it that kids are okay but animals are not that that doesn't make sense to me all right kids are just as if not more <laughs> important than animals okay just throw that out there that's my opinion <laughs> But, I, I mean, say, that's you. Like, this is why it's on the top ten, like most fucked up yep. list. Need that like, shock factor. That Aaron always puts. <laughs> oh god. So, so, David, I think they're telling you Free to make sure, make sure you have a gigantic meal before you watch <laughs> yes. your show. I'll I'll always eat lasagna. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lasagna, it's the number one choice. Yeah. Nothing will yes. go wrong. It's perfectly fine. Yes. But. So, uh, all right. Yeah, no, I think that's it. Next mm-hmm. next week probably won't be as intense. I think. I mean, I, I don't know, but uh, yeah, we'll we'll see. I'm 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 really interested to see how it plays out. So, all right. So I guess that'll be it for Higurashi. Um, we'll move uh, over to ReZero. Good one in the show. Um, I, yeah. I don't know this episode. Like, it's it feels like we're finally starting to close a lot of the loops that we opened from like this season season two so mm-hmm. we finally got the resolution for garfield so i'm glad mm-hmm. like hopefully that's out of the way I, and i'm more excited about like basically the cliffhanger the last scene where amelia talks with uh Ketna. that's like what i'm way more interested in than whatever happened in this episode because i really don't care about garfield so yeah i just can't wait for him to never be on the screen ever again but now it looks Damn, like he's joining wow. their party so <laughs> that's oh. this guy got left what, is, what, my man, what did my man do to you guys like yeah. dude cut some slack the Holy backstory shit. meant nothing like <laughs> he no, cares what? for his family <laughs> what was the part there was one part we laughed at but i don't remember what it was i laughed at all of it like i just oh. wanted him to die the whole time and then he joined their party yeah. and i was like are you kidding me I wasn't that. I think I'm just it. biased against Bakugo's voice actor. Like, I just I don't like obnoxious characters like him. I thought, but so. I thought that's why he was awesome. Because first I was like, okay, this guy seems cool, I but now like, I'm like, okay, no. like I, I don't like. I actually don't dislike him. I'm fine with him. I have yeah. really nothing against him. But yeah, but here's my issue. Here's but 
I, I've been confused about the role that Garfield plays this entire time because at one point, somebody at some point said something about how he had some sort of a special relationship with a female. The way they described it was very ambiguous and confusing and I couldn't figure out if it was romantic or who it was about or I thought it was about Echidna, but that um, was wrong. And then I thought maybe it was the little pink haired thing, but because uh, yeah. I still don't understand why no, she's Ryuzu, there or the what she... Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I still don't understand why she's there. What the like is there actually like is there an actual point to her other than just like some co extra contrived plot for the sanctuary area? Cuz she seems pointless and I feel bad saying that because she's freaking adorable. But like uh I think it's overall just the to the series, does she matter? Uh they she might. Like, isn't she like the guardian of the sanctuary? Is that like her main role? Yeah. She's That's what and, I had thought, like, right? She's one of like Aketna's like I don't, know, not, I don't know. Is it Apostle or uh, no? They were they're or... they're the first successful product of the Immortality Project, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. like that. Basically, oh, yeah, the that. List, pretty much just yeah. human clones. Hum homunculus. That helps. Thank you yeah. for that reference. Yes. But then, like, there's Garfield, and I never could understand like why he's so wrapped up with all these people, like why he's got his hands and everything, why he's so mad at everybody all the time. <laughs> like, I just feel like. I feel like the I feel like they were really done a disservice in terms of the directing of the show and also the fact that there was a break between the, each part too because I never really felt like I was able to put all the different pieces together for me. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. but by the time that he's that this episode comes around and he's mad and fighting again, I'm like, oh, for God's sake, when will this be done? Yeah, <sighs> I guess the thing for me too, like when they revealed how old Garfield actually is, like that didn't really do anything for me i guess i was just like that's the age i thought he was when yeah. it was like that whole big reveal like <laughs> yeah. oh my god he's like an eighth grader i was like i mean he kind of kind of looks sense. like that like makes Act sense like uh, well. yeah i mean yeah so i can <laughs> get like that explains why you know he's so like brash and kind of like narrow-minded into like this is the only way i know how to fix things like i just reject it's all or nothing you know when you're at that mm -hmm. younger age you don't really have this ability to complex of you know think about different routes and options and stuff so mm -hmm. I can kind of understand that, but yeah. I think for me, like a lot of the confusion, it's because the the re the, the loops and the redos, like that like Rezero, we we yeah. do so many so many of them. Like it's hard to know like what is the canon or what what mm -hmm. happened versus like like what's yeah. been done before. So yeah. that could be it. That could be my problem because that's my problem for why I don't like time travel stuff generally. It just gets too murky. Mm -hmm. and sure. this is so similar that, that's like my problem with this loop is like like subaru he made the he made the, the decision to not rely on it but then i always have to constantly remind myself like what what, what actually happened in this timeline like mm -hmm. like what is he doing like that's you know mm -hmm. canon and I, I think it's also yeah the, the split the the season split i think like it happened during that that this canon timeline so it was hard to keep track of what was happening as well so mm -hmm. so that's yeah, part of it too sure. Um, what uh what did you guys think of like the fight between Subaru and Garfield where we see like Subaru again like using his is it Shamak like the shadow affinity power and then he used the yeah uh, the imminent domain hand Something, or whatever he yeah. he called uh, the move basically. I can't remember the name armor at its finest basically I mean it, it, partially <laughs> right but then do we try to read like too much into it because it was Beetle Geist that had those arms as well right. Mm -hmm. I yeah. just might yeah. not remember like what the relation is, like how Subaru is related in a way to Beetle Geist. So it's kind of like the next apostle no. of. I thought it was something with like a Mark of the Witch or something with like being like a greed. It was supposed intent. to be. I don't know. It was yeah, right? affiliated with greed somehow, wasn't it? Yeah. So I didn't is know it? like I, there's I, I, like things where it's like Subaru is potentially an apostle, kind of like those apostles that we were introduced to at the beginning. Okay, I thought season. this whole time it was because his whole thing of Satelia and his like redo thing. I thought I thought all is like his dark. Magic comes from her. I don't know did if they? it was related to yeah, to and and now. it very well could be. And I'm yeah, just did, like not paying did, close enough attention. But did they ever like mention like where it came from? I knew he was using it, but I never actually knew like when how he was getting like uh, appraised by Puck. Whatever he said, he only had like the darkness affinity. Whatever. Yeah, but how is he getting like these abilities? Like, how is he like knowing to use? Like, I mean, we we always kind of knew about like the smoke screen or like the ability to like yeah. slightly disorient enemies. Mm -hmm. I think we had seen that in previous seasons, but we've yeah. never seen the hands, right? We just saw yeah. like yeah. in the last season, like Subaru could see the hands, and that's why he was able to dodge so like I, Beetle Goose's yeah, so, attack. And the hands that was before um, Aketna, so I assume it's it because because he has the return by death from Satelia. I thought mm -hmm. all of that came from 
whatever uh, Satai put in him. Did her, yeah. So could be. Uh, so I'm thinking that, like it's it's all come from Satelia, like whatever powers um, he has or Darkness oh, Affinity. I wouldn't doubt, but I actually would still like I like a little bit more of an explanation. See stuff like that, like the lore. Yeah. I relate that more to the lore, and that's what more I'm interested in in ReZero. Like I don't really care mm-hmm. much for the characters. You mean you don't want to know? Uh, you don't you don't want to know uh, Garfield's backstory? Don't really. <laughs> I mean, even even yeah. last week for Otto, like I I really didn't care much for Otto's. I liked Otto. Because, whoa, 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 whoa! It's just Garfield because like he's like Otto. he's he's, he's, he's different like, league. Well, right? yeah, it's because Otto's <laughs> likable. But again, it's like I'm not here for the characters. I just want to know about the lore. Mm-hmm. See, I first so, like that's why like I, the witches are my favorite because they're part of the lore. Like I like Garfield too. I like Garfield too because I like I like angry characters. But then I'm I'm kind of just done with it because again. Like the show, like the show has been feeling like it's just like it hasn't gone forward for forever. Well, now yeah. I just want it to move. See, we we need ha- new characters again. I didn't have that problem <laughs> when we had the witches or the tea party because that was for me. I was moving forward because I was learning so much mm-hmm. more about the world and how it works and explaining a little bit why, like why Super is in the situation he's in. That's yeah. not it. You were just excited that six new chicks that was, came out okay, on the again, screen. That's you, bro. <laughs> uh, me? You? That's me? you, Enstrin. Uh, that's, uh-huh. that's why I'm right. more excited when Amelia is me of the cat now because I want to know more, more about the the witch's lore. So. Yeah. Oh, okay, David. Yes. Yes. <laughs> me winking. So, <laughs> so that, uh, oh my I God. take it then, <laughs> David. The whole the whole part when um, Amelia walks into the trial and stuff, and she sees like all of the carvings from Subaru that he did for her, that did kind of nothing for you. It's kind of just like, oh, cool. Yeah, so oh, because, we continue because, to support her, right? Because the confession scene last week that was so... That was so cute! Oh my god, I thought that was the sweetest thing ever! <laughs> oh, that's the only, the only thing okay. that I thought right. was funny from it was just how Garfield had seen it before, like, Amelia oh, had, yeah. and so he was just like, yeah, I saw it, and then Subaru, like, freaks out that, you know, an 8th grader, like, saw, like, him basically riding all these, like, lovey-dovey things oh, on the wall. Oh, is that what he was freaking oh, no, out thought, about? I thought it was the kiss. I thought... He saw them kissing. No, that's that's what what oh, yeah. oh, was it the kiss? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cause because literally when they finished kissing or whatever and they walked out, he was literally oh, just standing there, there waiting. Yeah, probably, yeah. So, and I just imagine there, you know, he's like uh Super and Amelia, you know, pouring their hearts out to each other, and then there's just Garfield like off screen just a little bit, like you know, <laughs> peeking around on the corner like like fucking okay. little creeper. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'm gonna use this for dirt. <laughs> it would have been really cool if they'd actually thrown that in. Like had it be oh super my God. super in uh, the background where you wouldn't even notice that would have been cute. <laughs> Maybe in the next episode they'll do a flashback or something. Right. I don't know, but uh, the guy, the guy's in eighth grade, but you know he he has his bounds. He knows where to not be. Yeah, yeah. See, I love all these characters, and I find the lore really interesting. My only issue, really, is I can't say I love all the characters. Let me take that back. I love I enough saying. of the characters that like that's not an issue for me. And mm-hmm. I like I'm very interested in the lore. My issue is really just with the pacing and the story, like the way that they're telling and explaining it, mm-hmm. like the fact that we're sitting here debating. What is this power that Subaru has? How long has he had it? Where did he get it from? I mean, the t- I'd forgotten he had it, which is on me, clearly, because you all remembered. But, like, it just... I feel like maybe just a really good, like, video, like a ReZero explained mm-hmm. video mm-hmm. Would, would be helpful. Yeah, I, I feel like this is point with no spoilers. <laughs> yeah, I feel like this is one of those episodes where you kind of need to read the light novel or whatever to kind of get more backstory. Because it felt mm-hmm. very rushed. Or Reddit. Mm-hmm. You can do Reddit, too. I'm sure that they'll fill you in and hopefully not, you know... Uh, Spoil anything. Yeah. yeah I think I'm that's one of, near Reddit, one of no. the things that I really like with Attack on Titan, you know, where all those kind of like middle scene mm-hmm. cuts give you more lore background yeah. to either what's going on or even just normally to the world itself. I would wish mm-hmm. a lot of more animes would do that. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, part of it with Attack on Titan too and other ones is sometimes you have to just trust that they'll tell you at some point because mm-hmm. some anime, they have their different ways of giving you that, but they'll eventually you learn after you go through a couple arcs. I know I'll get this information when I need it and you can yeah. roll with it and not get sidetracked mentally. But ReZero is so all over the fucking place with their yeah. lore that I and just don't know. I just don't even know enough like from the light novel perspective, like where are we pacing wise with the anime? Mm-hmm. Like do we just have like a shit ton of stuff still to <laughs> learn about that'll eventually hopefully have these lore up. It's it like you said, like it, you know. Cause, yeah, uh, we still have okay, so much. That, that, that gives much. good faith that, you I know, think, things will be explained. I think right of, now, I'm kind of just like... Yeah. I think a lot of the pacing problem, too, like, when you compare it to Attack on Titan, is, like, it's manga versus light novel, whereas mm-hmm. I feel like light novels are so, like, they place so much more emphasis on lore that they'll eventually tell you later, mm-hmm. but, like, we usually never get to it. Mm-hmm. So I think that's, like... I think that's why... In anime, like manga is usually 
become better adapted because like you you feel like you do end up getting the story whereas light novels just feels like you're always missing something Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 because I read I read two of the ReZero books, and it felt very different than watching the show. Um, like okay. what they tell you and what you pick up for emotional responses from characters, and it's just so completely different than watching the show. Whereas if you were picking up Attack on Titan, it's panel for panel the same. So mm-hmm, basically, yeah. for for the most part, that's like that's mm-hmm. why I noticed yeah. too about a lot of light novels in general. Is like they their main hook is always the first first four volumes, like basically the first season, and then like. And then they 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 hope that like it gets popular enough where like they can then tell you what's really going on. So, mm-hmm. so I think we're do, reading that point we... zero. So okay, yeah. I was where gonna do... say just to, to last note, like, do we think that the end of this part of the season is gonna be them getting out of the sanctuary? It has. Finally, like, I, mean, oh, I, hope, yeah. I hope so. Because I'm like, I'm, I'm trying to think, like, you know, you're gonna have next episode hopefully focus on Amelia and Echidna, like very mm-hmm. directly. And then you think that, okay, Amelia passes the trial, which they can get out of the sanctuary, which hopefully would change the situation with um, Frederica and the assassin that shows up at the mansion and all that. I just feel like there's a lot of stuff to yeah. sell. Well, this whole season started off with um, with Rem losing, like, you know, losing her memories and no one remembers yeah, her. Yeah, right? That's so you, it's like, so. that whole thing is pushed off the side because we can't do, do any of that. And the two, what are the two, like, um, uh, sins? I forgot, like, what they were, but, like... Uh, I those, think it's like pride and gluttony. Yeah. yeah, like those two, like they're they're way they're way off to like till later because it. I'm guessing like after this, it's just gonna be focused on. I th- I feel like, like, like the royal selection is gonna be important now that Amelia mm, like, or like, that Subaru made up his mind to help Amelia do that. I feel like that's more of a precedence and, you know, ripped all the Rem fans. I feel like we're not gonna see her for like a long time. <laughs> no, no, no. Let's, just, let's. We're not even gonna get that. Uh, that that either. Like there was a, that. Um. That little arc thing that you were talking about with the, um, the royal selection. Like, I think that, yeah, the royal selection. I think that's like a season three thing. Yeah, it just feels like season two is just them. Yeah, King there's absolutely no way. Yeah, yeah. There's way too much. I feel like it, I feel like in order it has to be sanctuary solved and then dimension incident solved and then rem solved. Unless yeah. they and do you, up in there. do you I think the thing would solve for yeah. a while? Well, yeah. And I don't think they're ever going to come back to like the Roswell situation for a while now, right? Because they kind of covered like an episode of this, them both being like, hey, yeah, you have the same ability as me. Cool. Okay, I'm going to go defy what you couldn't do or whatever. Uh, (laughs) I feel like it might be the finale because the the bet that Subaru made with Roswell was Mm -hmm. that I bet you I can save both parties and have everything I want. Oh, right. I mean, whatever. I think think Roswell will still be relevant just because like, when we when he when it re- was revealed that he's like a follower of like of Kedna, like I feel like a, like a Kedna and her crew is gonna be like more important going forward, especially since like everyone is so involved now, like yeah, with Roswell and the Sanctuary. There's mm. so many things to cover, and there's only nine episodes yeah. left. Yeah, yeah, all right. <laughs> like, holy crap! I completely forgot about all those things. I was like, dude, no way. Uh, what's there's the name no of way. the the little blonde girl who's in the library? Like, uh, that's a whole nother. Yeah, Beatrice. 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 That's a whole nother oh, plot man. line that's as well, right? I forgot yeah. about her. I know. <laughs> that was, yeah. So, and, well, actually, you know, actually, I'm more surprised that that Puck was still in that one crystal. I thought he was like, gone forever, but he's still. Oh he, like, yeah, I, know, I was super Garfield. confused about that too. So I don't yeah. know what he's. I don't know if he can like, come back to Amelia or anything like get a new contract. Not didn't explain. <laughs> like so, yeah. I wonder if they're gonna explain that. Otherwise, I'm assume that like, because I think they said Beatrice was a spirit, so I think she's gonna make a contract with Amelia or something, so she can get a new one. So, because mm. I think that's how they're gonna save her. So we'll see. Dude, I was saying that too, yeah. but in a sense, I thought I thought Subaru was gonna make a contract with Beatrice. I, that's oh, really? what I kept thinking. Like, I kept thinking that was gonna happen because mm-hmm. I remember at some point they kind of like uh, uh, they talked they they were they were talking about contracts and stuff. I was like I was like, dude, I was like, he's gonna make a contract with Beatrice. Okay. I don't know. If that's I, even I didn't know there's like a special happened, like condition because I know Amelia is a I'm, she's a spirit user. I didn't know yet like have some. So I'm no to meet that, yeah. so. We don't fucking know. That's just another thing. Yeah, we don't know enough about the world. What you know is fine, not so, fine. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. many questions. So like, I think, I, yeah, I'll, I'll be done. I'll just say like yeah. I think like that's why I, it, this show is probably better to binge than to like to watch weekly. Even though I didn't, maybe I, I didn't enjoy watching show. the director's cut weekly, but that's because I knew everything. Yeah. So that's the thing. Like when I tell people to watch season one and stuff, the fact that they can binge it now. Like if yeah. I had to go back and watch season one week by week and deal with you rough. know super repeating the first episode like five times, it would yeah. be very rough and a hard yeah. sell yeah. for for people. Also, I still want to like I know talk shit to all the people who are talking shit about Subaru. It's like man, 
if you're in a serious situation, care. like you would not last. Like you, you wouldn't last either. All right, bro. Anime plot, so <laughs> it doesn't really apply. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I think that's it for our round re-zero. Hopefully, hopefully the pacing picks up because it's hard to yeah. do this weekly. True. True. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, we have a bunch of other shows to talk about. Yes, we do. Um, so yeah, yes, that, 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 that's it for ReZero. Um, we'll jump into uh, Dr. Stone Season 2. Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> and welcome, uh, Brian and, Brian? <laughs> and, and Justin. Back. Yeah. Uh, before, Brian, did you watch Ooh. Dr. Stone? I did. Okay. Um, so we'll hop in, Brian. Actually, uh, I'll say, that, Brian, what, do you, what was your initial thoughts on this new season so far for dr stone uh not bad they just sort of kicked it off kind of slow, i feel like but uh yeah okay well never mind then i thought you could be more excited because i'm really <laughs> enjoying this season dr stone um i think uh, um was it i like i like how they introduced more 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 of the science like the um there's the ultraviolet and what was the other thing um Dude, was, the flashbang. Flashbang, flashbang? yes. yes. <laughs> the flashbang was pretty dope. I'm not the flashbang was sick. That was very dope. But then it was also, but then it was like, uh, it seemed so intense. And then immediately after, it's just like, it was just kind of like a, it was like a downfall where they, you think it's like a hype moment. And then of all people, Sink was on top of her. And then it just <laughs> yeah. No, it was a hype moment. You can't, you can't let that take away from the fact that the flashbang did its job, you know? That was, and still, then, yeah, that was still sick. I'm but it's dead. like, how did it not affect her more though? But it affected uh, the other blonde girl, like, like, like probably because she, had, she had more vision like she had better vision so she was more sensitive to it in a sense what uh, but hmm. like, i don't know because she was like it was she was like right in front of it right but if you're already like kind of blind in a sense right it would probably not be as effective as someone who had like super good vision right kind of like if you had like super good like uh sense of smell and someone farted in front of your face it would probably <laughs> affect you a lot more <laughs> than say some guy who uh, has a stuffy nose okay that part you know? it's okay like... okay that's right. probably, probably more shown in than the science part, so I'll, I didn't worry about too much. The only other thing I'll say is well, like, I saw I'm interpreting it. So <laughs> the only other thing I'm saying is, um, man, they have so much rare metals in that one K. That's like a treasure, <laughs> treasure for them. Like, hey, so, man, when you yeah. have like multiple thousands of years for like the metals to like, you know, shape and form. It's still Japan, like, man. It's still I. I still have trouble thinking like Japan gets all this rare metal, but wh- you never whatever. know, man. Yeah, show and yeah. show, dude. You whatever, gotta have it. Whatever, we'll, we'll roll with it. But the, the only weak, uh, the only weak part of this is like I don't really care about the like the villain in a sense. The uh, even though I don't think she's gonna maintain, I don't think she's gonna stay a villain. I think she'll become a an ally. Is like the gymnastics girl. Oh, um, yeah, I just don't like. I just, yeah, I don't know. There's just like a lot of things I just don't really. Um, I don't. I don't know. Just the villains in the show. I just don't like care much for it just because it's just uh. I don't know. It's just hard to explain. No, no. Like, I, actually, I feel the same as you, Stratton. Like, I don't care. I, I mean, besides the science, like, I like Senku and the village people. I like them discovering new things, and yeah. I think that's the plot. Just them, just like rebuilding society and like discovering new things. Whereas, like, this whole the Stone Wars part, it's like I just want yeah. to get that part over with. Like. I don't know. So I, far, so far though, sorry, David. Uh, with the Stone Wars though, they've been actually been using science though. We've been avoiding like those those like uh, typical shonen fights. Hmm. So far, but we'll see how long that actually lasts. But the uh, but no, like the flashbang, the the flashbang part I thought was the part I thought was like really sick. And even at the end where they actually got like, so when I was thinking about like the previous show with Jujutsu Kaisen that we were talking about and how the guy was deaf, I got uh, confused with this show. The show? This guy, okay. yeah, because this, this is, is the guy that has the bow. And like the like the he's intense not, he's hearing. not blind though, Strand. He just has super. super See, that's the, well, that's the thing. I couldn't oh, remember. Like, that's that's what I was saying before. Though. I just immediately think like, oh yeah, crazy hearing. The guy must be blind. There's no way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but it's just like immediately where my mind goes, just from previous shows, and that's uh, this. Uh, but it's uh, but it, like at the end though, when they finally like, actually like got in contact with the. Uh, oh God, I forgot their names. Um, um Taiju, Taiju, and Yuzuhara, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Basically, like, cause I, I, I don't really like Taiju. I think he's just an extremely annoying character. But like, but even like when they watch. got in contact again, even when they got in contact again, I was like, damn, it brought a tear to my That's eye. Friend, you like obnoxious characters? Not this kind of obnoxious <laughs> though. Like, it's just like it's like what, how in Black Clover, like the first episode, like I, like when he was starting to talk and yell, I thought, damn, this is a new voice actor. I was like, this is this is pretty new. 
episode two, done with it. I was like, okay, we can move on. Um, that's I kind of like have that kind of feeling. It can only take so much about it. But mm. the one thing is that they've been gone for so long in the show. Like you kind of got like a re- it was like a kind of like it was a uh, kind of what cleansed. Uh, it was like a, just a cleansing. And now uh, I'm actually kind of happy to see them. I have a feeling uh, that like I, mean, I suppose. Uh, I have a feeling like when uh, when that archer guy when he thought suspicious around the grave. I feel like that's got to screw them over. Like Sakasa's got to know about it, and he's gonna make an ambush or counterattack around that. Yeah, somehow like Sukasa just knows like everything that's happening too. It's like man, this guy like basically beats up tigers and lions, and then yet somehow he just knows. Cause stuff. science, baby. Oh yes, because he's in top notch on science. <laughs> this brute strength, fuck. <laughs> so I don't know. There's there's so certain elements in the show. I'm just like whatever. But I have like the like the DBZ mentality. It's still fun. It's still like my favorite mm-hmm. yeah, sequel of. Oh yeah, yeah. All the other shows. Every right. song is so good too. I don't remember. Uh, I don't. I just watched it. I, I know I liked it right now. I can't remember it, but okay. I'll get back so to you on that trend. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> but let's see. Uh, but uh, do you guys feel like the same way on like the the gymnastics lady? Do you think she's gonna become good? Bad? You know, I I, I think the say. the whole I think the whole concept of the show is that they're gonna try to convert everyone to, With no to their side, yeah. right? With no deaths, right? So I think they're going to slowly work on that and they will probably succeed because you have to remember these are all uh, teenagers, right? There's no adults. So everyone, like in a sense, when you're an adult, you're kind of uh, set on your way of thinking and uh, you're very stubborn and you probably have more bloodlust than these these younger um, people, right? So teenagers, whatever. So I think it'll be a lot easier for them to convince them that, hey, you know, let's you know, we have no reason to fight, you know, let's just be allies. And then with the plan that they have to convert them over with, with that false hope, I, I think it'll be like the direction that the show is going to go in. And then I think Sukasa, even Sukasa, like later on towards the end, he'll probably convert over as well. Once everyone else has been converted and he's the only one left. So I still think like the only show, oh, I think the only person I, I think that's actually going to die from all this is going to be Sukasa, just because I don't think there's any way that this guy's going to become good. No, because I think that would uh, that would go against their uh, like Senku's belief. So I don't think well, that's I, going to be a thing. But, but, but the thing is, I don't think they're going to kill him. I think he's going to end up like somehow it's going to be like the, that moment of turning, like, you know, like, you kind of like how they pull it out, where it's like, oh, this guy's actually going to become like a part of their crew, right. and then he dies off from like them saving him. Like he saves them somehow in some situation. I think it's it's I, I just assume it's going to be one of the, it's going to be like that kind of shonen trope. Oh, huh. yeah, I suppose. That's like, that's, how, that's how I, whatever his friend says, is actually how I felt too. So, yeah, like, that, that's how I just get it. Cause I yeah. don't like, I think this guy is like so against like, you know, grown ups. He just has intense PTSD. I don't think there's any way, really. Uh, but, but I mean, but, but we'll see. I, I mean, I still think that I, I'm still going to hold to my beliefs that they, somehow it's going to happen. And, and like, the majority of these people are going to become good or survive, or if they're going to die off, it's going to be saving them. If there was a death in season one, I would believe that. Since there hasn't been a single death yet, I seriously doubt that's going to be the case. But so you actually see him becoming good, though, like a part of their crew. I mean, yeah, even even before Sukasa killed Senku, right? He even had uh, like some kind of like regrets or like uh, he had these flashbacks, like man, like if we met three thousand years earlier, do you think we would have been like good friends? And then he had flashbacks of him being part of Senku's group when he when they were doing that thing, like those things, you know. So. I see that too. Yeah, and 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 again, like these aren't like adults; they're they're still kids in a sense, so they still have that that fresh young mentality. So I don't think he's a hardened, like he has like he's he's hardened himself to to be that this brute like this ruthless killer that he's like setting up himself to be, right? Uh, so I think it's very possible. Seeing Tsukasa as a kid is just like there's absolutely there's no way. <laughs> like, I mean, I, I like know. how they say like, oh, this guy's a high schooler, but yeah, he's always, like he's basically takes on lions and tigers. So it's like. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. Whatever, you, whatever you say, Shonen, I'll believe you, and I'll still enjoy your show. <laughs> right. But I mean, like I said, it's, I think it's very possible. Yeah, it's still like I don't know, like I, I'm still just like wanting to see like what happens in the show, especially with like just like uh like the one thing we were kind of scared about, like how I think uh, David mentioned it at the beginning, where we didn't want like those typical Shonen fights that we were actually hoping like for like the science part of it. Which like at the start of this, it seems like it's actually the science. Yeah. Well, when I say typical yeah. Shonen fights, like I thought like with their initial invasion, like. Yeah, and just like yeah. the the village people with their katanas against like like Sukasa and uh, Hyogo <laughs> and like gone. and even in Homura, like they all look so OP. So yeah, yeah. villains always look OP. 
And they always look thirty years older than they're supposed to. <laughs> yeah. They even mentioned yeah. they mentioned that too. Like like the they had like these soldiers in Scott's group and like are you really supposed to be high schoolers? Dude, even like that group of like where they show like, you know, who's gonna be you know, like they're gonna like revive next. Yep. Like they all look like fucking thirty like thirty year old <laughs> built like built people. They look like Brian. <laughs> not, wow. not, 30, not 30 years wow. old you know, rude no. so Joe. rude what the heck brian i'm not i'm not uh you're you, you definitely look much younger than me but uh oh yeah. hell no brian don't take that shit lying down but brian would be brian brian you would be one of the people if this ends up happening in the future you would be revived by sukasa so don't worry about it <laughs> yeah okay dude i'm yep. pretty sure i can't beat a line with my bare fist <laughs> hey man have you, you ever have, have you ever tried though see that's the i don't think i'll be able to <laughs> <laughs> uh, you just gotta believe brian He's got to believe, man. Yeah, just let me power up real quick. You know? There you go. Start giving one. Yeah, one year after post COVID, and we'll, we'll see, Brian. Yeah. You, you go back to the B status, I believe. So just throw me into like a gorilla pit or something. Dude. See if that can last. <laughs> no, we'll see if the gorilla can last. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then, I, mean, I mean, it, it's fine. It's it's part of the, the show and trope, right? So yes. it's, it's whatever. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's still not taken away from the fact that the show has a lot to offer you other than those fights. Yeah, so. but it's just like, it just feels like the show, they're just holding the show back. So that's like, that's, it's not a bad thing. It's just like, it's just, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, it's, I it's, it's well, just it's, a shame that like, it could have been much better if you didn't have the show and tropes holding it back. For me, I'm fine with like I'm actually okay with it. And in this type of show, like a lot of like a lot of those ones, like if they kind of uh, if they solidify it kind of early on, where it's going to be kind of like one of those shows where they have they kind of have like some jokes, things like that, I can let it slide more. Cause uh, but it's more of like if it's just like a serious ass show, but you, they kind of just like throw like certain kind of like you know comedy moments into it, like how um or like vice versa, like how Fire Force did it so poorly. It's uh like something like that. Hopefully, it makes sense. Anyway, but yeah, yeah that's but, yeah. I think it's the. I still it think for, it's Yeah, Doctor Stone. and still like one of my favorite shows this season. So looking forward to the upcoming shows, and then I guess I'll move on to B Stars. Um, if Ku and Taylor wants to take this over. Oh man, this show was uh, this episode was pretty damn good. I don't know Taylor if you wanted to start off or not, but. Dude. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Beastars is going to be like one of my favorite shows of this entire season. Like, I freaking love this show. I think it's so interesting. And I just can't wait to, wait to see where it goes. But the first thing that I want to mention is the fact that it kind of seems like um, Leg- Legosi has, has kicked the bunny girl to the curb. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's like, I just want to protect you and everyone else from, from distance. Like, I don't want to be your your rebound guy in a sense because from from the conversation that they had, you know, like Haru clearly still has feelings for Lewis, so mm-hmm. he's like, yeah, you know, I I don't want none of this, uh, so I'm just gonna go do my own thing, and uh, yeah, it'll just like like That's... he's kind of just becoming more independent, you know, like last mm-hmm. strong, like strong willed character. So I thought it was really nice. I thought that scene was so well done. Like, I feel like it was so nuanced and emotional and it made me sad for him, but happy for him that he's moving on and Mm. confused for her. I feel bad for her and I'm frustrated with her. And I just, there's like, it's kind of messy, but like, that's why I liked it. I just thought it was a great scene. Um, What else happened this episode? Remind me, (laughs) Koo. Yeah. I know I liked it, but I'm just having a hard time. Um. Let's see. So we learned a little bit more about how Lewis became involved with um what what are they called? The Lions. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, which I'm still not I'm still not like entirely sure how I feel about that entire exchange. Like I can't tell if like it was their idea, but I can't tell if I, I can't tell who's trying to get what out of it, I guess. Does that make sense? I think the lead up to it and the in the exchange that they had made no sense uh, whatsoever. But then the but the yeah. ending is what got me though. Like the fact that uh, like Lewis was going to be this mob boss and to kind of like fit in or kind of continue from that point on, he had to eat this piece of meat. And yeah, like the description of like him fighting his uh, like his natural instincts to to not vomit, and then he's fighting to like mm-hmm. I gotta survive, I gotta eat mm-hmm. this. And that was brutal. Yeah, I think this is kind of where that mentality he had would develop, right? Like mm-hmm. only eat the strongest survive in a weak parish. And uh yeah, I don't know if he was forcing it or not, but when he said it was delicious and he wanted more, uh 
yeah, like to me, that was kind of insane. And I'm not really mm -hmm. sure how it works, but if a herbivore eats, like, why can't herbivores eat meat? Why they literally can't digest it the way they're supposed to. And that's what I was thinking the whole time was like, I don't even know if they would actually hate the taste, but their bodies literally aren't made to be able to process that. Mm -hmm. So that was a little bit weird. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know what to do to make of it. It kind of makes me want to like jump to the manga. <laughs> <laughs> it's just them it's just that group which is why i'm trying to be patient and just like wait for more information to come to us um but i just yeah. desperately want to know where his headspace is at yeah like i said I, I kind of forgot like how it ended last season but i do remember the part where lewis was able to get inside somehow meet up with the mob boss and yeah. like held him up at gunpoint but yeah. yeah like what happened afterwards when he shot the boss uh, that made no sense to me whatever he had Three to four lines right there. Lewis was willing to die or get eaten. And they're like, you know what? Let's make this guy our boss instead. And then they end up saving the guy or something. And they had this whole meeting. Like, like I don't, I don't know. Like, that whole transition was just really weird. But uh, it was. I, I, yeah. I guess it's nice to see a backstory of how Lewis became the boss. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, it'll, it'll be really interesting to see how he, like, progressed from here. Um, I also think that like i mean i kind of i think that maybe they're the reason they made him the boss was just a bit contrived i think that's why we're feeling that way it just felt like they wanted to have this twist and so they found a way to make it happen rather than it really making sense they try to make it sound political like well these other groups are gaining power here and this other group is kind of crazy we don't want to be involved with them and herbivores are like the way of the future as we become like more equals or as our society changes like i get all that and it like mm -hmm. it makes sense did, was I super satisfied with it no but i can't accept it but the thing that still gets me is just like i can't like lewis was like kill me and eat me and then he's like Never mind, I'll be the boss. <laughs> like right. he just I just really can't tell what his like goal is or where he's at. Which I mean, honestly, like <laughs> he's probably so traumatized by so much shit that's happened to him and he's just a kid. Um I, don't know. I, I feel like Lewis is just a weak willed character. I don't really like the guy. Like Really? Yeah. Interesting. Because he's always like flip flopping, right? First he was willing to die, the next minute he was like, No, I can't, I gotta survive, you know, whatever. Like he's always constantly changing and he now he's not even I don't know if he's like doing this because he wants to, or if it's just because it's something different or he's doing it to survive, you know, like he's yeah, only kind of changing. So I hate that. Yeah. I could see why you hate that. That totally makes sense to me. I think I've been able to roll with the punches just because I feel like every time he has flip flopped, it's been because something major happened and completely like rewrote a lot of the ways that he viewed the world. You know what I mean? Like he's just mm -hmm. had these big, um, twists thrown at him so i've kind of accepted it i'll wait to see where it goes from there but we also we also got introduced to a new character was it a llama at the end to the drama club uh, mm -hmm. yeah i think so either that or a, like a goat i guess something, something like that he's voiced by Ka Aram. Kajiyuki, Aram. who does aaron i was like oh my gosh he's definitely diff sounding different here aaron from attack on titan yeah that's the voice actor so weird. It's kind of a nice change between shows because they couldn't be more different. <laughs> I mean, I guess that makes him a good VA, right? Because I did not know that was Aaron. That's so him. Apparently, he can do a preppy, uh, pretty boy, uh, yeah, voice, I guess. But uh, that character definitely seems like he's kind of shady and up to no good. So, yeah, you know, for sure, I feel like he's going to be Lewis version two. Uh, but like, honestly. not good. He seems like he really wants to like stir the pot. Oh yeah, for sure. So, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it's getting a lot more interesting, and then uh, mm -hmm. kind of want to see how like Lagosi develops from here. Um, mm -hmm. just now that he's strengthened his resolve and he's going to try to find his murderer and protect Haru from a distance or whatever, it's it'll be pretty interesting. And then, do you think that? Do you have any suspicions as to who might have eaten Tam or? Did the devouring or whatever? Do we know for sure that it was a devouring? Like, what? How? How do we know that? Like, did was there any evidence that there was a devouring, or did he just go missing? Do you remember? Uh, as I, if if I remember correctly, he just kind of disappeared. I think I'm not quite sure. I feel like it's been talked about so much at this point that I'm expecting it to be something that's not just a simple devouring. Like in my head, I've been kind of thinking, is there an herbivore out there who construed this to happen and try to cover it up as a devouring to cause all this drama? 
Um, just because, you know, it's gone through two seasons now of this plot and we have no clues. I feel like yeah. it's just going to be something big. Yeah, it's kind of like ReZero and their Royal Selection. Whatever. It was kind of just introduced mm -hmm. and they just threw it on the backseat for mm -hmm. now. So, uh, Do you but, have any theories? You know, I, I want to say it's probably the Tiger guy, but... I um, think so. But wouldn't that be too obvious? I mean, it would be, but I don't know who else it could be. Yeah, um, I know. And then, like you said, it could probably be a herbivore, and it's just kind of throwing want everyone off our loop. But mm -hmm. with the introduction of Lewis uh, kind of being able to consume meat makes mm -hmm. it seem like it's a possibility mm -hmm. that it's a herbivore that's kind of like developed that kind of nature as well. And it was just one of those one like uh, spur of the moment or, or heat of the moment ordeals that happened, and then he just like uh, gave into it to to eat yeah, maybe. or whatever. So. I mean, it's definitely possible. Yeah, we really don't have a lot of information to work with on it, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, I don't think I have too much more for B-Stars. I just am really enjoying it. I think the season's great. I'm super happy that Haru got kicked to the curb. I'm sure she'll be back for other things. <laughs> but I'm really happy that the romance portion of this is taking, like, a backseat. Oh, my God. When she was, like, pulling him down to kiss her, I was just sitting there and, like cringing so hard the whole time like if you people watched ReZero and thought that that was cringy like this was so much worse for me I don't not, know about you Koo not trying to sound weird but when they were like slowly like uh like getting closer to each other with a face and he saw Lugosi's yeah. like mouth muzzle or whatever, muzzle, whatever <laughs> slowly touching Haru's face I was like how does this work <laughs> you know like I just completely like just threw away the like the like the seriousness of the moment and i just went on like all scientific and just thought about yeah. like, how it would actually work like you know well, it's not just us the characters of the show are doing the same thing they're all trying to get information like yeah, how are you then, guys having sex <laughs> yeah the group of the guys like bro like didn't you just didn't you break it like how are you like you just smash it in or what and it's i, th I thought i was pretty funny but yeah i was like i was the same as them too i was like man how does that work this it just the size just you know what I'm not even going to worry about it. It's an anime. <laughs> oh damn! But yeah, no, loving, Sorry. loving that pacing and everything. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's it's pretty damn good. So, like yeah. the artwork of this whole show is just gorgeous. All right, sorry, we talked about it forever. I love B stars. I can stop now. Yeah, no, you have more time. Yeah. So I mean, I in that good. case, then in that case, then <laughs> I have one more thing to say. Just one more thing, which yeah, is sure. that. One thing, Lagosi's uh, voice actor, I think is really good. I, I, I've been trying to figure it out for like two seasons why I like the voice actor so much. And I think it's because um, like they get you really into his thinking because it show, like they normally edit out all the little sounds that you make, all the hums you make to yourself. A lot of that is like not there in anime. Well, sometimes it'll be there, but they always like have him like humming thoughtfully to himself or like mumbling softly stuff that like other people aren't hearing and that I feel like normally wouldn't be in another anime, but we get it in this one. And I think it really helps to humanize him and like feel very close to his character. Cause I do. And it sounds like you do too. Feel very close to him. So hmm. yeah, that's no, just another like, thing I realized this episode. Yeah. I feel like the voice was done really well. It, it really matches his personality and mm -hmm. I, I enjoy that quite a bit. I, it feels very genuine and, uh, yeah, I, I didn't really know much about the other other technical stuff, but yeah, no, I, I thought it was really, really good. That's it. All right, so that's that'll be it for B stars. Uh, we'll go on next to Hori Mia. Mm. Uh, so I have a play about the, I don't know. I just the very first thing I have to say about the show is that the pink haired girl needs to get her trauma out of here, ruining my I don't know, not wholesome, but like I again. It's like Snafu. I want the I want the show to be about like the two main characters like learning how to be more social, making friends. And here, like I want the show to be about the two main characters and whatever they go through. But like, I don't want the I don't want this. Like I don't know. Like when you were saying Tara last week, how you don't like the, the forced drama, or whatever. And you're like your rom coms. It just felt that way with, with the pink hair girl. Especially since she's supposed no. to be dating like, the student council president, too. Like, Yeah, right? What the hell happened with that? <laughs> like, yeah. like... No, no, David, Definitely they are in high that. school, so there's bound to be drama. Come on. Uh, it doesn't have to be. David, mm. to be fair, though, it's a one and done. She she threw down the gauntlet, she got rejected and thrown out the door, and now it's over. <laughs> like, it all I'm happened hoping, in one episode. Like, which is the same yeah. as, like, what's been the theme of this season, which is so much is happening in each episode. <laughs> I'm feeling the Terminator. It'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> Never get rid of her. Um, 
<laughs> I, I agree with that, David. I, I think from this episode, what I... I mean, I, I like shows when they do focus just on, like, the main two. I think that's something that Your Lie in April kind of did a really good part on, even though, you know, they did have an ensemble of different characters, but it always really honed in on the main two characters. Um, but I actually really like this week's episode with um, Mia and Toru and kind of their evolution of friendship, because I know the main focus was really Mia always being this outcast and labeled as, you know, this weird ostracized individual and... I thought it was touching, you know, a lot of the moments mm -hmm. that he had with Toru, especially the scene on the rooftop mm -hmm. when he's kind of saying to him, like, yeah, you're weird, but that's not an issue. Like, who cares? Mm -hmm. And Mia, you know, has kind of that tear up moment. So I like that they're kind of ex exploring that route further of just Mia and Hori. It's like Mia mm -hmm. gaining more friends as well. Mm -hmm. I agree. I thought that I thought that moment was really sweet. I liked it a lot. But one thing I, I didn't fully understand was why he was made fun of to be with is it just because he's quiet probably like it's just probably yeah. gloomy, i guess it's gloomy, gloomy at it. the whole the whole gloomy Dude, japanese see, kids yeah. really do this like they just ostracize a person for their entire like school career because they're quiet like that's insane uh, i don't know let's ask our our, our japanese uh person <laughs> I mean, here I think uh, just... yeah. aren't they all quiet like aren't the majority of the people quiet I think it's uh, just like quiet it's, or just, they don't want it's just kids like finding a reason just to make fun of each other or whatever. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like just kids. There has to dumb. be someone, right? Like, and you just sometimes become that unlucky individual. So I think it's like yeah, that or whatever. You just got you just got unlucky, yeah, to be mm -hmm. odd man out. So yeah, yeah. And then, I think I think I'll oh, go ahead. Cool. Oh no, I was like I was just about to say. Uh, the only experience I've had is with uh, high school kids, and they all seem to be energetic, open, fairly unique, and. I mean, I've never noticed any of this like bullying or isolation of any single student. Um, but yeah, I think kind of like Maybe. what everyone else is mentioning as as kid, you know, kids will be kids. You know, if you're just not the uh, if you're not part of the group, you're just going to get isolated and bullied. Out I mean, it can also be like it's also like this show could also be a plot device too. like it's just maybe a show being dramatic as well. So there's also that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the yeah. different clicks and preconceived notions of school and stuff. And yeah. I'm sure they try to relate that to the viewer's experience and all that. Um, the one piece I don't like is how Mia keeps on leading Toru of that he still has a chance with Hori. I feel like that yeah. just kind of needs to come to a head. And I know it yeah. will. At some point, it's going to be really bad because Mia keeps, you know, telling Toru like, oh, yeah, like, I don't I don't like her. She doesn't like me. We're just friends. Like, we're chill. When it's like every single episode, we see that they both, you know, <laughs> love each other. I mean, the the hand holding and, and, scene, and then the yeah. Oh, I like your was it? I like your hands or her, her tips, or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Sure. Wait. Did, oh yeah, he's like talking about the mark on her hand from writing like a bunch of stuff, and then yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Did it declare that they loved each other like after they're holding hands or whatever? No, I think it's just oh. maybe that's in the like when they say. It's because in Japanese, when you say ski, like there's like you don't have to when you say something like I like, you don't have to put a subject before it. It's it's contact based. So like in that conversation, you could assume they're talking about like what they're talking about before. Like like they're was it we're talking about their hands or their fingers like they yeah. like they're talking yeah, about they're like, I like I like your fingers. So when you say ski, you it could mean like I like your fingers. But it's just like in the translation, it was just like it said I like it said, I like you, but it really meant more like, I like your fingers, like more ambiguous. Okay. Oh, Cause oh, I yeah. thought as well that it was more like a confession from both of them. Like they both kind of deflected in a sense, oh, but they did have like a line of like, Oh I, yeah. It's cause Japanese I think it confusing. is a confession in it, but they're just giving each other an out, you know? And it could just be translations. Cause I'm, I want to say the translation was literally just like, I, I love you. Like both yeah. of them did say that at some point. That like, was the translation. Point, like, so it's very, explain why he liked the fingers. It's very it's ambiguous. Very even though, like, even though if you look at the context of the fingers, it sounds like a very weird thing to say, like over and over. So, yeah, so we'll have to wait and see because, like, yeah, it's it's very it's. I think it's intentionally amb ambiguous. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm starting to get the feeling from this show that this is really just supposed to be sort of like a coming of age type of thing, right? Where we have like the main focus is on these two, but really it's actually going to be about that huge ensemble cast that we see in the intro and like the various things that they're going through in high school. That's what it seems like to me, especially now that they um, had this whole episode focusing on um, Mia and to Toto's relationship. I thought it was really well done. It was nice to see. Mm -hmm. And I I I'm on board for more of that. Yeah. I'm like how you guys Do remember you? Uh, Toru's like first name, not Izumi. 
I, I, I stole it from Justin. I would have never remembered oh, his first okay. or last well, name. <laughs> I got I got I got notes here, so those are those are helping me out. I don't remember their um, first names either, so it's fine. Yeah. I think one of the other gripes that I have with the show is I I just don't really know if it's that believable, like how quickly, you know, everybody's now accepting Mia. Like, especially with like even Toru, because like in the very first episode it almost seemed like Toru, you know, one just never really involved himself with him mm-hmm. and then even furthermore just because now mia's you know involved with hori and stuff i feel like you know they have that connection but Tori just kind of took a 180 and just like mm-hmm. okay now i'm gonna be super friendly to this guy i'm gonna tell him like oh it's okay that you were weird the whole time and it's just like it's it's a hard reach for me well i, I feel, feel like. i feel like this show has been a lot of show has been a lot of telling and not showing like this, like this episode, her little brother is now in a different grade, and so he's not home as much. And she's like, "Oh, now that he's not home as much anymore," or like they were saying, "Oh, now we've been spending more time with each other," or "We've been spending all this time at home, and now it's going to be weird without the brother." Like they just keep telling you that these things have happened yeah. and time has passed, but it doesn't feel like it did because we didn't see any of it. There's not even yeah. a montage. So hopefully there's some background there. I don't know if it's just a trope to make, you know, individuals who are in that situation feel like they have, like, it's possible, like it could happen, you know, if I'm like kind of this uh, outcast or loner. Oh, maybe I'll gain this. I mean, not to this extent in this quickly, but I don't know. So like, I I don't know. Oh, okay. You go first. Oh, I was about to say, I don't, I don't know uh, how how it was back then for you guys, but I think high school uh, guys or just boys in general. We make friends pretty easily, and then they, if you if you can bond over like one thing or one topic, you can like very easily become the best of friends, I guess, in a sense. And then mm-hmm. with that moment that they had with uh, him asking Hori out and getting like like you know like shut down, and then like having that that bonding moment, and then with what like the six months pass in their third years now, I'm sure there was more than enough time for them to become like six really months. Friends it after. didn't feel like it was six months, or like the 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 time skip or whatever. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, so we did have that that fight between them, and it was kind of cute in a sense where both of them were blaming themselves, uh-huh. and you know, didn't want the other to take blame. And I think that's the thing that I I, I really just love about Mia is that, like how overtly serious he gets at time. Like when they're fighting, mm-hmm. and you know, he's just like, "Oh, you assaulted me," so like I just I just was you know reacting, but he's like going like way beyond you know what Tora was doing when he was beating him up so just funny yeah. mia quirks at the end of the day <laughs> he is a badass apparently confirmed <laughs> all right i'll say for her like, for mia like i think it's more of him just like being the quiet he, he, like no one really hates him it's just like, he, like no one really cares about him as much so i think they're more willing to accept him and i think what, what mm-hmm. the, they moved on to third year and i think it's many it's many just like hori's friends like they're just more nice to him just because they see that they hang out together a lot. So I think we see more of his interactions with her friends, not really like the entire class or anything. So yeah, I think that was the that was the other thing that reminded me that I liked was just when Toru said it's okay to be weird, and then Mia had the moment again of where he's like, "Oh, I wish I had told my younger self that." So you can really see like you know he beat himself up for all these years of thinking he's weird, piercing his ears, tattoos, everything that we've learned about Mia. And I think it's just a really good like learning tool it's like obviously nobody can change the past but it's like you shouldn't let something you know define your life if you can i I wonder if like this is more irl but i wonder if this is how like those golf kids in school felt or like what they went through as well and why and why they became the way they were and then eventually they made some friends and they just grew out of it like Eh, no Uh, 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 As, (laughs) as a guy who hung around those golf kids no there's no, there's no, no. I'm pretty sure they're based, they're, they're based we, in adult years. We, all, we still all played games and stuff. They're they're still they still like the color black. Um, Are you sure? Is it, well, it wasn't because you guys got bullied and you thought you were just weird, so you decided to pierce your ears and get. No, like, none of the kids got bullied. Well, they're all the weird just thing is the weird thing is I hung around the goths, but I never actually took the style. <laughs> so yeah, I, I know. Mean, none of the goths kids crazy, like right? The kids. I was just kind of like the, yeah. I was like the odd sheep. Sure. Okay. Yeah. 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 None of the goths kids my got bullied, but Trenton. You're probably the hot chip of everything. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Shots fired. <laughs> yeah. a good chip. That was that was Brian clapping back for the age. I love you. <laughs> I love you too, man. I love He's you, bro. Crazy. I'll go oh, back. I'll be playing Diablo Four with them. <laughs> oh my god. Oh god. Yeah. But, but uh, yeah. I don't know. I just don't know what to expect for the rest of the show. So we'll see. Just yeah, no more, no I, more forced uh, drama, please. I don't want to, like the whole thing, like two weeks ago with like the, 
like the student council president like making Corey look bad and then this week with like the pink haired girl like none of that please i just mm-hmm. just show me that the just show me that the friends like gain character development not from like conflicts that's that's all i yeah. ask would you not be happy if they tried to like focus uh like an episode or i would think it'd only be an episode of like toru because i feel like they're shipping toru and the blonde girl like hori's friend pretty hard in terms you of think like, so I don't, I don't think I don't know that's, I don't know think that's gonna happen. It's it's more no. like it's, well, not shipping. Yeah, that's it's, not a bad. It's like word, but. that's what usually happens in these kind of shows. That's Foreshadowing. Like the, that's like the typical yeah. trope. It's like the friends, the friends get together. So I wouldn't yeah. be surprised. I I mean mm-hmm. I don't really care if that happens, but I'm yeah. still. I just like I'm only focused on the main two. But if mm-hmm. if it's done in like a good way, then I don't mind. But like. Well, as of right now, I haven't really seen much interactions to make me believe that they would end up together. Uh, as yeah. of right now, uh, like I mentioned earlier, Hori and Mia, they're like the, the main couple. And then everyone else around them is just a supporting cast to help their relationship grow. I think that's just basically yeah. what's happening. But it just feels uh, like a lot of the supporting cast, besides Toru, like he's the only one that's gotten spotlight. I feel like they just don't matter. No, they do matter. Because if you think about it, like without Toru, it would, Toru is kind well, of like said, slowly said, pushing. Well, I said besides Toru, he's like the only one that got spotlight so like mm-hmm. that's like the, the blonde hair girl and like the green haired guy like we don't know anything about them so i think they're gonna be we're gonna learn more about them in the upcoming episodes i think they're gonna become yeah. a lot bigger and more important looks like there's a pink haired guy too so we're getting all the <laughs> yeah all so the like, it's, it's, only, it's only episode yeah. three and then like i'm pretty sure like even though david may not like it but i'm sure there's gonna be more drama because you know it is <sighs> high school it is what it is because if you if you didn't have something like this uh they the show would be kind of boring and bland, right? If everything was just, you know, happy and blissful and nothing Not happy, ever happened. Because the main two care of their own problems and you deal with. Right. But how many, like, how long can you go with just those things? Uh, I, would for be fine 12 with that. I feel like we don't have enough, uh, we don't have enough of like just focus on the main two characters. It's always like, you always got to involve all their friends. No, I feel like there has to be some kind of variety, uh, the kind of like freshen the, the, the show a little bit. And, uh, with, without any conflicts, I feel like it's kind of hard for a relationship to really grow, like, drastically, to the point where it's it's actual, like, romantic interest or whatever. Uh, I think I'm somewhere in the middle of you, too. I totally understand where David is coming from, because I felt this way when I used to watch Taiwanese dramas. It's not so much friends, it's, like, family members. You have to learn the entire life history of every single family member, and they're all terrible people. Like, they all owe money to, like, loan sharks and all this other stuff. It's the same tropes every time, and it's something that I've seen in anime, too. With, with this type of anime where, like, I do want other characters and I do want, like, some level of drama or conflicts because, like, to Ku's point, it helps the relationship grow. I just don't want to see the same rehash stuff that's already been done a million times everywhere else. Um, which is basically, like, what that pink hair girl was. Okay, so I guess my problem is just, like, the forced drama then. Just because, like, it just felt forced. Like, she's got in there for no reason, like... K-, K dramas are still popular as all hell, and it's the exact exact same tropes every single time. So I don't think the trash is gonna go away. Shout out to, per- to Peter's terrible taste. <laughs> it's what the people watch. Just had, to, <laughs> had to get it out there. All right, but I think that's gonna be it for Hori Mia. So we'll see what happens for the rest of the series. Uh, we'll go next to uh, Mushoku Tensei. Brian, go for it. Oh yes. Um. You know, this show, I'm starting to enjoy it a little bit more, you know. Uh, the animation is still spot on. I feel like this episode is more, it was a more slow introduction of another character. So it was it was good pace, you know. I think uh, we all thought that she was a girl, right? Because um, I'm saying. Definitely. Like, <laughs> I could see that coming from a mile away. I'm just dude. saying, like, again, this is the original the original isekai so it has all the tropes well, actually this is an anime trope in general where you always like it's like it's always like like when they're kids like you think it's a guy and it's a girl instead so like i guess it's not just isekai it's just it's an anime trope but mm-hmm. so that was that was like pretty obvious but i still enjoy it but i felt like yeah. compared to the the teacher it felt like not really much happened with like with um with like Rudy and the new the new elf chick. Well, I think a big part of it was just because of I think well, I think a big part of it was just like, you know, how he was saying it was like, Oh yeah, this reminds me of like when I was back as like a kid uh, in the previous life I had a childhood friend 
and uh it we kind of went through like all those all those things and it's also maybe partially kind of i don't know if it was just kind of like a connecting through like that way he was also kind of like growing as well and even though honestly it was completely his fault I, I, it's just like i mean because of course in, in anime he, he had absolutely no clue and I, i'm i'm pretty sure he wouldn't have done that yeah uh but no, i thought yeah but that whole like kind of like friendship is building well uh, other animes have kind of ruined it for me because i didn't want to assume that that's a girl because odds are anime traps, traps man traps are, yes. traps are very popular anime tropes. So cool. I'm not <laughs> remember this is the yeah. OP. you have to just think it in your mind but i mean I, honestly i would have been okay if sylphie was a guy the whole time like I oh yeah fine that yeah. flip back like no, it definitely didn't have to. Like yeah. the, the whole, but I think the whole reason why like they like made it was basically for, for that scene. Yeah. Where it's just like, oh yeah, let's take a, sh- you know, let's just take a bath. Dude, everything's uh, fine. Yeah, and then you pull it down. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> I love the, the detail that they had to go into that with him, like nicknaming like all of the like epic the like comment about like, fantasy like, names. Where's the limp? <laughs> He's like, oh, I know what it's like to have a limp dick. You don't have to be yeah. that, that got me. That one actually got me. So. I was a, like, oh yeah, I had one of those in the previous life. <laughs> yeah, I think um, I'm, 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 go ahead, Brian. Uh, well, uh, yeah, but there's there's one scene in particular, like where like I really got to understand like the father son aspect of it, and that shit hit hard, dude. I was like, damn, that's fucked, man. Like yeah, you, it was just, that conversation because was good. you you see it so much and so often, where like you, you're you're the you're the dad, so you you're always in the right, right? So it's like, when he didn't get to speak, and, like, his dad just kept shooting him down, I was like, damn, that's fucked, dude. But yeah, then his was... dad slapped the shit out of him. And yeah, slapped. I was like, Jesus Christ. And then dude, he just like clapped back with a, you know, sharp tongue. I was like, damn, dude, that's one way to do it. Put him in his fucking He's, like, place. always <laughs> wanting to say that. Hell, like, yeah. He's, he's like those yeah. keyboard warriors, like, on the internet. He's, like, he's always wanting to do that. And he, again, gets to the, the fantasy. <laughs> Be, yeah. just beat him down with words though too Even, like the mm-hmm. dad basically just like told him how it is it was, like like it's like oh yeah it must be easy just have like your own kind of like mindset just immediately think of like something and not let the other side speak yeah. mm-hmm. well i like the part too where he just talked about like with him being you know a 30 old dude from the real world he's like i've already gone through so many ways of how to like <laughs> get out of things and put people in their place now like you don't want this old man yeah. like you're not gonna win <laughs> yeah. back up <laughs> I think he was like all he was like in the right too, like every like everything like uh, every like almost every single thing in the way. Well, I mean, and then of course, yeah, then, yeah. yeah, yeah. But like, I mean, when you're in the right, it makes it way easier to argue back. So, yeah. So, true, um, true. but but other than that moment though, I, I think this guy's an amazing father. I mean, the fact that he's like trying to support his kid and to how to pick up a girl and stuff like that, and, and that's why he's an amazing father. <laughs> I did love I did love it when he was talking to Sophie at the end and like things weren't going the way and he just like looks back towards the dad and the dad's right. just like giving him like you got this, you got this. Yeah. I believe in you. Yeah, and like even towards even towards the end, your dad was like, What the hell am I teaching my son at this age? Like, maybe my son is an idiot. Like <laughs> Yeah. And then like uh, and then like before that, right? Like after he had that incident with Rudy and then he was talking to his wife. It's like, man, like I wonder if this is how my dad felt. And then uh like you, you learned that he kind of went through the same thing with his father, and then he left his house at an early age because of that. Yeah. So uh at least he's able to like think back and admit that he was wrong and he's like working to be a better father because you know it is his first child he's not really sure how to like act around him because he's rudy's not your typical kid right he's actually like some 30 year old that that came from another world so it makes it kind of hard for him well even even the parents are saying like you know i mean this kid's like way more uh way more mature than any like anybody else where he right. even he even mentioned too, like oh, like when he actually like, like hit the kid, he's like, oh man, my kid actually did something that's like a kid, <laughs> right? You know? and, and that's something of like you know the, was a thirty year old man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you think from here, in terms of like Sylvie as the new character, um, apart from one, her just either potentially having like the same magic potential as Rudy, or just being you know kind of more special. Uh, but do you think we're gonna see more in terms of her background of how she mentioned like oh yeah, my dad's like. A half elf, but then none of both of my parents don't look like me, mm-hmm. so that was kind of like a uh, something I'm interested to see. Where that's well, going. I, my so. prediction is two things, right? One, she's adopted, and two, mm-hmm. 
Her mom's a hoe. That's about it. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, okay. Whoa. Do, do, right, you think there's, do you think there's her. any chance of Sophie actually being that uh, superb or whatever race where they have green hair and they have a red gem, Dude. but just for whatever reason, well, I, she I didn't, didn't see that red that gem, gem that they were talking yeah, about. Yeah, no, yeah, they didn't have it because that's when he was like looking and like seeing like, oh, does she have a red gem? And, you know, yeah. she didn't, but. I feel like, like maybe there's still some ass pull that they could try to do. Maybe. Like, well, like I'll draw like... on her when she comes terms older. Yeah, or maybe. Yeah, yeah exactly. Older, or it's like something that's given to her by somebody else. Like when you when you reach like that age or something. Mm -hmm. Or it could be like because like how she's like so hardcore and like wanting to learn magic. Like maybe there's somebody else, or for some reason her parents like oh like you know like we're gonna have to like go through some tests or something later on. Yeah. And like I don't know like who knows because it's something that could easily just be I would assume if it's a gem could either be stuck in planet or something because it's yeah, magic. It's, I think similar to like. I mean, I want to misspeak, but like, I think like with Indian culture, one of the other cultures, there's some like rite oh, of right. passage with age where you, you know, add yeah. like an additional marking or something like that. So yeah. I definitely think that's something oh. that could happen. Oh, yeah. Because I, I don't think they're just going to show like green hair and like red eyes and be like, oh, you know, safe. But I was also like kind of waiting for like, because I know like uh, her, uh, his uh, teacher basically said to avoid those people. But I would right. assume, <laughs> though, if she's telling him that you would assume that everybody would know this. So I thought like I was thinking like, that's true, too. She, because when she first came into the house, I thought like, okay, this is when we're gonna see something's up. Because like when the maid saw her, mm -hmm. and then, and then, uh, but then nothing happened. So I was like, okay, maybe I'm just overthinking this completely. Who knows? And then, uh, but then she kind of like that, like that second look. But I didn't even think about like that's why she gave the look. I'm thinking like, well, he's about to find out. <laughs> so yeah, you know, the maid just knew it's like that's a that's a girl. Like where where yep. are they going? <laughs> yep. Yeah, it immediately just kind of like that look. I was like, okay, well they're not gonna take the other route. That uh, basically it's like you know green hair. Uh, yeah. Red eyes because they, she took the hood off, I believe, too, right? Yeah. I mean, they, well, they all know who yeah. she is. I mean, yeah. they basically yeah. had to comfort her. I mean, for sure, I feel like it's going to come into play later. Uh, but I guess yeah. that's kind of what Justin was saying. Uh, maybe it's a rite of passage and she's not old enough for that to appear yet or to acquire the red mark. But mm -hmm. uh, you can tell, like, the hair color is very significant. And yeah. that's why like, the other kids know that she was a demon, right? You just looked at her. She seemed normal, but because of the different hair color, you could tell that she was a demon. So yeah, uh, I'm sure yeah. it'll come to play later on. Yeah, I'm still. I mean, even though like I've seen so many like uh, uh, it's kind of shows. Like I'm actually really liking this one. I mean, I'll yeah, just, no, like I was just say like if it's you know going to typical isekai, she's just gonna be part of the harem, and she'll probably like be in his party when they go adventuring. When they yeah, do the time skip. Looking back at the promo image, and there's only I think one other red-haired girl that we haven't seen yet. Yeah, but your point, David. Oh. That's building the harem because <laughs> for Rudy, the, the OG isekai. So yep. you got. And then you establish a childhood friend early because you gotta get that those in. Oh, you gotta have those. Yeah. You, you have to Definitely. have the childhood friend because just for them to fail later well, on. In the, well, because you're a kid right now, so now's your best opportunity to plant those seeds. So, yeah, yeah but the yeah. childhood friends, as we know, David never wins. <laughs> what? That's not true. Something maybe uh, this is the different one. It may be the OG, yeah. but maybe this isn't the one where it sets a different thing. What if this is the show that started it all? What if this is the show that basically made childhood like childhood <laughs> friends lose? That wasn't this show, Strain. It was uh, like uh, the, there's plenty of others. There, it was the it's the visual novels from like the '90s that did that, so you can blame them. Wait, how old is this? How old is this one? It was like mid 2000s, I think, when it started. Oh, okay. Well, not it started oh. the '90s. It was the mid 2000s. Okay, well, so. it's in the clear then. For some reason, I thought the show was older. Oh. This was a 2012-ish, so later in that. Yeah. Okay, so, I, I for some reason thought this was way older than that. Actually, it's not, it's not as old, but like. It's only older just because it's older than our current trend, but not as old as other shows. Oh, um, yeah. But okay. I don't like it. In terms of Isekai, this has got to be like the one of the best, if not the best, Isekai enemies out there. So, absolutely. Already, like you could say OG status or whatever, but dude, yeah. this show is way better than fucking Sal, dude. Like blowing it out of <laughs> oh, the water yeah. already. Yeah. Like, I sure. mean, that's a very, like we mentioned before, that's I a mean, very low bar. That's a low bar. And yeah. Again, like even like Prime. Sal season one, dude, blowing that shit out of the water. Again, it's, it's hard to compare it to because Sal's uh, MMO, whereas like this is like straight up like this is re this is more the reincarnation isekai uh, genre. This is like so when I say isekai, I mean like the reincarnation isekai is what starts a lot of the tropes. So yeah, true, true. But anyway, um, going back to the harm though, like basically, I still like the obviously teachers number one, and then childhood friend, and then the other red <laughs> the other redheaded chick that we see in the opening or ending, whichever one it is. Yeah. Well, well I mean. Forever. Rudy's yeah. got the the holy gift, you know, Roxy's panties that he. Oh has. yeah. Rename. <laughs> yeah. 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 Praying to it every morning. Oh my. Yeah, God. and that's why he was worried that like the maid had like found it or whatever, and he's like, oh. 
<laughs> oh. his, dad, his dad had found it. That's originally why he thought he was in trouble. He's like, oh, my dad found the panties. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, if it wasn't for such, like, like I said, if they can get, like, toned down the etchiness, I, I think this... Sh- like this show would be like fantastic. Yeah, was, awesome. I think it was I feel pretty like good. This, this episode, episode it wasn't they that just bad. played grab ass at the beginning. Oh, yeah. right, in the garden. Right. That was the only scene, really. Well, that and right. also like when they were like uh, in the bath, but it's it's more. But I didn't consider that etchy though. That was like, more of like obviously this, you know. Oh no, no, like this episode was fine. Like, yeah. like the first yeah. two episodes, yeah, they take a little oh, bit. Yeah. It could have been way worse though, right? Because they 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 got it out of the okay. They had it in the beginning. They got it out. They moved on. Um, I guess. Yeah. So it's it's like as long as they kind of keep that like if, if they have it and they just want to you know th- like just basically throw it out there if they need to put it in right like in, in a spot and not make it awkward just have it there at the beginning move on or wherever but not yeah. like just sprinkle it here and there and then just like or you know, cut the, like the mood. I mean, so far what? it's been. I mean, at least this episode like they cut down on it, so hopefully it keeps it that way because I don't want again I don't want to be like jump skip to to like. Or time skip to when he's a teenager and he, we have to go through all, all over again with him be, being a perv still. Yeah. I, th- oh, I, I think that's just if, him. <laughs> if anything, the show that has been taking the cake from just being like way too much has been a redo of Healer. I watched the second. <laughs> well, I didn't even watch yeah, the second episode. Yeah. I, I honestly skimmed it because I was just like, it, it was basically like, uh, it's like rape hentai, basically. Like, oh. it's It goes pretty far in terms well, of I, what it's. Pass. Yeah. Pass. yeah. All so. right. We can say that for later, but <laughs> uh, we don't know. We don't even need to talk about it. I'm just yeah. saying it's out there, and I know a m- bunch of other animes of that style are out there. It's just like so. Yeah. It's weird that it got put into. This I movie. wonder who punched that little kid in the eye. I think uh, he's like, probably, probably set him it. up himself. Yeah. Yeah. What a little either, shit. Either that or maybe the water balls hit hard. Uh, no, yeah, that's what I was dude. <laughs> There's no way that water ball did that kind of damage. You don't you think, think so? the like the no. dad then is either like beating the shit out of him or no? I think I think the the kids just set him up for that. Like, well, they, I mean, he even mentions though that like the kids are still basically being pricks. Yeah, I know. So every time like he fights back, they probably go somewhere. Like, kid gets oh, yeah. another eye, black eye, whatever. And He's a kid's ma- uh, mom. A reason to visit the other to yeah. get, to visit the dad. Yeah, because you know yeah. she wants them. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but yeah i think that's gonna be it for shoku tensei so another show that we're excited for looking forward to next week yep yes okay definitely yep and then um i guess um well uh we'll talk a little bit about uh Lock horizon um oh i know boy. i know that like, dropped this, so you can you... so i guess it's like setting up for the tone i still enjoy this show um like justin did you end up catch up to it or if you still not seen no, it oh, okay. i haven't yeah okay never mind then it's just it'll just be me and Sren for a little bit then but brian too oh, brian, brian watched it as well so we'll we'll see what we can do are you do you understand like kind of the general idea of the plot that's going on here brian uh the green-haired prick became was it the pope or some <laughs> shit no he became a dupe and yeah, the duke. Not the yep, pulp. that's the word. He became the duke of the I'm town. Like so he has what you might call it more, uh, more power than he did when he was part of the circle. Am I getting that right? I, I mean, when you become your own like little cult, I mean, I think you just automatically oh, get more power. So based right. so whatever. Okay, the justification they're trying to give is that um they're trying to give more relevance to the NPCs because you know we 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 like to think that like the players they're like OP and they do whatever they want, but they're what they're saying in this episode is really that like they still rely on the NPCs for a lot, for like for food and other materials, and in their production. So even like even a lot of the guilds, like the crafting guilds, still rely on their materials and other things from the NPCs. And like they're saying how it's still very like medieval style, where like only the oldest gets to stay in the village, and if you don't, if you don't have a useful skill, you basically can't stay in the village. And so these other NPCs, they felt like refugees in Akiba because when they, um, because they get, they get to do quests and they get to change, like, their crafting job, their subclass, basically, from doing quests, which I guess is the first thing, the first time it's ever happened. So it's, it's, so it's, it's like, uh, like, social mobility, they get, they get social mobility just from being in this town, but they were still, like, they're still, like, um, they don't feel stable just because, like, they still feel like they're just refugees, so... So when they, 
when they see that um that a noble is coming like basically in this in this world like like no when you're a noble even though like you're rich and powerful or you still have a duty to take care of like like the people you 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 rule over so they're actually excited that like someone's actually gonna like have responsibility so that everything happens to them like like the hopefully they're thinking that like like they'll be taken care of because i guess they still don't trust like the players or the adventurers so so now that um the one of the players is becoming a duke like they feel more more comfortable around him the npcs feel more comfortable but like the the guild leaders they're afraid that like it's just he's he's the duke of the 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 neighbor kingdom so they're they're just afraid that like because the two kingdoms are in conflict they're gonna get caught in this in the war between them eventually and so that's like that's what I, I gathered from this episode and also and also like um they're trying to they're trying to like uh, make their make their um diplomacy better by marrying the two sides but they guys make it sound like you know the princess wants to cut it off with the uh, she wants to cut off her marriage to the creepy guy so that's also another form of conflict so just a lot of a lot of moving parts going on in like the background here so i have no idea how you got all that david holy yeah shit. It, <laughs> it it's really hard to keep track of because dude i'm over here waiting for another raid fight to happen <laughs> And it it's mostly like, it's like bro. it's a it's a lot of like the yeah a lot of the process is setting up and also they also mentioned mm-hmm. before too in the history how um there used to be like like the, because it's based off real japan but there used to be one uh one king and there used to be like a, a real family but then um but then i think they got invaded and basically the king decided to protect his capital instead of everywhere else so people so the westland people they distrust like that that air, that side because they didn't help protect them because they 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 um, prioritize their capital instead of instead of like the rest of the, the country so that's also a poor comp, a point of conflict and then when the king died i think they're saying his imperial blood passed on to the westlands people and so they feel like they're more of a legitimate they're the, they're the legitimate heirs of like the the royal bloodline so just... So, I, a question that I have since you know I haven't watched this season yet, but is the primary focus, as you kind of alluded in this latest episode, they with like more of the political and like power Definitely. struggle? Yes, and it's all power relation struggles. to. Yes. So then, is it that the does the round table that kind of they have the members from are those members from different servers? Because like the servers, if I remember correctly, are like different parts of either Japan or the world, right? No, I think it's servers. No, it's, it's the same okay. server. A different guild, it's different guild. Ah, uh, okay, guild but it's also in... that that main server that they yeah. are already on. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, the, and do they basically dictate like all decisions that happen? In it, that it's. Uh, I mean, they're the main the main conflict is that like they're not. It's not a governing body. It's like a co op basically. Mm, so they can only do things okay. if they all agree to each other, and that's why. And um and also um. Uh, they were saying, or um. Ainz was saying his biggest criticism was that like because it's consensus based, because it's it's more similar to Japanese companies than like actually than other where it's like mm-hmm. where um it's consensus based and like you can't do anything because because one person doesn't agree with, to it that um uh, okay. you can't react fast to to like any urgent situation so got um, it so just a lot yeah a bunch of power struggles and also like yeah it's all it's all guilds like no one really no one um. I guess no one um, was higher than anyone besides besides uh, Krusty, but he was he was like mm-hmm. before. I guess he was the de facto leader because of his charisma. But now that he's gone, they don't have a unifying person like or someone with a strong voice like he did. Got it. And so it's also safe to say, like based off Brian's comment of like they haven't really gone back to like any like guild fights or everything. And again, I know it's only episode three, but. Mm-hmm. has it really just been more of that serious focus like yes. they don't even have like anything lighthearted or what we kind of came to expect from the previous seasons yep yes okay good to know. <laughs> that's why good i dropped job. it <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I mean again i re- i even though it is i i admit it is like confusing keep track of, i still like the world and the lore so i'm trying to keep track of all the things that happen but even i'm having trouble but it's like yeah. i want to like it i know it's a i know it's a really good show but my god like i seriously still wish they would have had like a recap episode just like an like i would take 30 minutes but i think even an hour would have been perfectly fine just to kind of just go through like the main parts of the previous season. i think an hour like, would have been I too forgot. long but 
Yeah. Yeah, There's something forgot. maybe in the first episode at the very beginning, yeah. like a five minute, like, hey, remember oh, all these mm-hmm. guilds and these guys? Like, I think more than that. I think they definitely need at least an episode of a recap. I think it's there was so much mm-hmm. stuff. Like, I don't That's remember true. people's names. I barely remember what happened. I forgot. I forgot even Krusty was a character. And I forgot what happened to him <laughs> at the end of the previous season. See, this is what happened to Krusty. Is like, uh, I'm still trying to remember, but like a lot. I'm starting to understand more about the power struggles. So, um, yeah, it's. Well, my, my problem with the show is the fact that, you know, when the first season or so came up, like, it was a lot more fun to watch, right? It was interesting. Some lore was nice and all, but now it's just become too serious, and it's kind of IRL. Really well, political. you're kind of, yeah, you're kind of going away from the fantasy aspect and going more into, like, IRL, like, political aspects. And, mm-hmm. like, to me, that's not what made the show, like, interesting or fun. Like, you know, I agree that you know, lore is nice here and there, but it's at this point you have to remember every little tidbit that happened in season one and two add more characters to that in season three and you, you kind of just like lost what was like great about the show like mm-hmm. what brian said you know like the they had the giant raid like oh you know we have an issue of money what are we gonna do but yeah let's go do this raid underneath the city and fight three giant like raid bosses to like meet the makers of money and get the funds to do so or whatever yeah you know I like do, that that was pretty cool interesting i do but, agree they should break up break it up more into like to more of like more like mmo style like because it's mainly been like more guild style like like politics where it's like guild members like arguing with each other or like or guild rivalries and factions where it's like yeah it would be nice to go back to more of like the rating aspects so it just needs to be more balanced because just this first three episodes was heavily on like the guilds and like their struggles so yeah like you want to talk about forest drama this is forest drama that i don't want you know <laughs> like if this shit was in horror mia i would not care for it as much but actually, you know, there's gotta be some variety with it i think it's also i because, mean i'm like, not... oh i was gonna say i think it's also because like the first two seasons we're we're um ex- they're explaining more about the world like i think we've we've hit a lot of the mechanics of the, the mmo and yeah now it's just like it just feels it just feels like i mean it had to happen at some point yeah. right so <laughs> I mean, I'm not even gonna hate the show because it's unfortunate like, that they couldn't balance it. Yeah, yeah, like I'm not even gonna hate the show for like all the political stuff and basically like, the heavy, like the heaviness, because it is different than a lot of other isekais. Because a lot of other isekais do focus more on like the I action mean, again, and kind of like MMO. So I still yeah. I, oh, sorry, I, I, def- well, I definitely between MMOs and the reincarnations. But and... they're like stuck in it though. Like, shouldn't it be like an isekai because they don't even know they were in a game at one point, but now they don't know what's going on. It's like Overlord. I yeah. guess. I guess, and this, and this, I guess in this show too, they're trying to make other MMO shows like they. It's like they pretty much like separate. Like they make you. They explicitly say like these are just NPCs, so they don't really matter. Whereas here, like they're trying to blur the line, saying like these are. You, even though they're NPCs, you still should consider them as like characters and people. Yeah. So. No, this is a good show, but I just wish I knew more and <laughs> without having to watch. Uh, uh... What did I say? Like. 48 52 episodes again <laughs> yeah not not anymore Sren. not anymore yep. so, <laughs> i guess i'll be like i i, I don't know how you think brian do you like are you feeling you're gonna drop it like cool because this is not enough of the rating aspects absolutely no way I... <laughs> brian what sorry are you like cool <laughs> and you feel like you need to drop it soon because it's not enough rating and other fun mmo stuff uh i mean i'll probably still sort of watch it but it's just it's just the interest is just not there. Oh I, I wasn't God. like hooked to it like I was like mm-hmm. who knows how long ago. I think it was like so. four years ago or something, three or four years ago. Long, yeah, it's been a while. Time. When I was a wee lad. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Because because the, days, different times. Because the interesting thing about this show for me was that like I just happened to stumble upon it and I was instantly hooked because of like how the story was going, like the class system, all this cool stuff and like their intricate like sort of combats and how they did stuff and i was like damn this is pretty dope and i'm coming now it's like there's politics and i hate politics with a <laughs> fucking passion like a burning passion so it's like man i don't care about this man just throw me in a raid like, a dungeon give yeah. me some pvp and call it a day like they, they, no like, like, they don't have to do like like they can even just like left the politics just like do what more like strategy just like raid strategies like that was satisfied a lot of people who are into the politics as well like you could have be strategic in your raid setup and your your team comps too but they don't they're still not even doing that so yeah it's just the the things that were very interesting in the first and second season just isn't there yet but but 
What also makes the show bad too is when you show that damn bard character. <laughs> Your favorite. Right at, the, right at the beginning of the episode. Oh, I, was, I, I, was, like, I remember it, seeing that. I was like, he back. looks really no. familiar. And then it clicked to me. It's like, oh, he's the bard. Yeah. Also, yeah, I, I, thought I, was, I thought it was the girl that was the bard. Yeah, the girl was the bard. Was one of them. Yeah, the girl was the, the bard. Yeah, the another dude. I don't even remember another the guy. He's dude, like, but... I think like a knight or whatever. No idea. But... I was so triggered by the bard. I don't. I don't even remember that guy. Yeah. I just want to say too. Um. Again, I think also like they. The I wish. I do wish they also do more of like yeah like rate more of the game mechanics because I feel like other MMO shows they don't do a lot of like animes that do like game moments still don't do them well because it's the perspective of a writer not someone who's like a game designer or like someone who's like a pro gamer or like understands pro gamers that's why I think there's a lot of politics in here because like he's writing in the perspective of a writer trying to write a story not like not someone who's who play games often <laughs> so. That's what yeah. I wish it would do more too. Like we need more game focused shows. Well, again, we have nine episodes possibly left of the season to yeah. see what happens. Or no, not ten. Ten, sorry. Yeah. So so that's that's it for Lock Horizon for this week. And we actually uh, talked about a lot more than I thought. Yeah, same. So we'll see yeah. if we continue <laughs> next week. <laughs> you carried, David. You carried. Okay. So yeah. And then um we'll move on that to um the slime show. Um, I didn't watch. I tried to watch it this week, so I don't have much oh, to say. You. I assume it's still more of a slice of life stuff happening. Slice of fight. Brian, you want to start up with this? Or which one is this? Jujitsu? No, Green slime. Green is slime. Green is what? slime. Yep. Oh, slime. Sorry, <laughs> I'm like I'm like so out of it right now. I can tell. I can tell. Um, stop doing drugs. Eh, that's that's pretty much my reaction. It's like eh. Same. Same. It's you. You guys pretty much recapped it all like last week. It's like. The slime is just pushing off stuff to like other people. Be like, oh, this is coming, or I got just the person for it. Boom, problem solved. Oh, this happened. Boom, another person. Problem solved. Oh, you got a fucking giant ass spirit bomb nuke that'll like destroy <laughs> the entire city. Just shoot at me. Boom, problem solved. I'll just absorb yeah. it. It's like, man, there's like no real problem facing itself here, man. It's like. It's, yeah, it's, it's a slice of anime. Just, what did you expect? O P is like hi. Wow, I'm so surprised. Yeah, it's it's just like I'm like, man, <sighs> I want some like interesting ass shit to happen, but it's like I'm just watching it just like to enjoy like just the characters at, at this point. It's like, oh that character model looks pretty cool. Oh, those two characters are fucking alcoholics. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know about cool, but uh it, it, it's it's becoming like a lot of like the other kind of like these kind of shows where you watch where you have OP main character, and it's basically just like how there's no, there's really no drama to the show at all. It's like how Brian basically said that there's like an answer immediately to every one of their like uh, uh, answers or issues. I mean, See, this is why we and, enjoy Mushoku Tensei. Like, it's so much more exciting watching that than like watching the slime show. Yeah, and the thing is, like, like it's like I feel like the MC is going to be OP just because like he's already like uh, you know a crazy mage, but then. Like, uh, but there's there's always that chance that maybe he might run into something where he'll actually have to try, or uh, it, it's still like I just still don't know because it still feels like it could easily become you know very dramatic. But this show, I don't feel any like absolutely no like like parts like for like anything with drama. Like like the first season where they had like the main like was it that main girl that uh the slime ate like it, that was I think like kind of like one of the only uh, parts where like damn like it actually had like dramatic feels. And then they try to do it once with like that giant orc, like orc king or whatever it was. But I didn't mm -hmm. care about him. Uh, I don't know who really did. And uh, like, even like in the situations where like with the the demon, the, the one of the demon lords that uh, he befriended, you know, that, that little lowly girl. Like he basically got out of it just to befriend her. But it was just like even like when it was like in a situation where he was like overwhelmed, he was able to just bail out by just becoming friends. And it's just, uh, there's just really, like, I don't know, there's just, it's just like a, build, it's just almost watching like a building sim, in a, in a sense. Like, it's just like, they just continue to build on their their town, or they, they I don't even know what you call it, want to call it, economy, whatever, wherever their whole deal is. Society, civilization. Um, yeah, basically, yeah, trying to bring everything together, which it's, with, with absolutely, like, no issues whatsoever. See, like, it was just like that, it'd be fine, but, like, they, when they, again, they try to influence this conflict, and it's like, why bother? He's just gonna win, yeah. so. Like, like, again, like, it's like, when you, like, if they were, if this was just a building sim from the beginning, and, but, and then you didn't, and, like, without throwing in, like, those things with, like, demon lords and everything else at the beginning, where it's, like, you kind of get hyped, where it's like, oh, damn, there's gonna be, like, these other, like, aspects of the show, and then you just kind of side, you sideline it, you hella sideline it, 
for all this and then where it's just to the point where it's just you're so used to this where it's just like what the hell's the point of even the conflict because they can just overwhelm i don't know but it's it's like I, but it's, I still don't like completely hate the show. It was just more like hoping, like hoping for more. I think it's just like we I just complain about how popular it is, just because like if we don't get it. Yeah, it, it, I mean it, it's crazy popular. I mean it's okay. It's an okay show. It's not terrible. Uh, but it, it, there's just I just I just think there's so much more to be hyped with, like Michoko Tensei. Yep. But who knows? I, I don't know. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> like I think uh, Brian. I, I don't know Brian if you have. Uh, if there's any other parts you wanted to like point out, or I, I can't really completely remember besides like the spirit bomb part, which again uh... it was just like a comedy moment. There's no danger. Yeah, I mean, towards the end they're just sort of teasing another new character. It's like, what is, wait, who? This new plotting out at the very end. I was like, uh, there's a new villain supposedly, an assassin. Yeah, it's, it's like <laughs> just another person just get absorbed, I guess. <laughs> I like how everybody is just like, oh, like they supposedly like uh, shot another villain. It's just like, okay, like yeah, I guess, yeah. I, guess I guess it's, I guess the show is like just a show to like sort of turn off your brain and just enjoy it in a way. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I still don't like. I said I don't hate the show. I mean, I, I'm I'm liking it. I just it's just not as hype as everybody has made it sound. Yeah. yeah. Just but, whatever. Uh, yeah, yeah. it is what it is. I think that yeah. So I think that wraps up it up for slime ten for this week. I think it's gonna be a continuing, continuing, uh, theme for going forward. So that that'll be it for for slime Tensei. Um, I think we can just do a little bit for I'm a spider. So what? Another isekai. I mean, at least with this show, there there's more interesting things going on, right? There's actual conflict. Like you don't really know exactly what's gonna occur, and like I feel like it's it's more refreshing because there's there's actually uh, something different involved, right? There's no OP character, so it's it's like okay, yeah. let's solve this. Agreed. Everybody kind of has stake in the game at this point for 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 one reason or another, and none of it really seems like a big reach or too contrived in terms of like the logic that it uses. Oh yeah, um, for sure. Yeah, I, I thought this episode was, you know, another fine episode. I, I think I'll personally, you know, continue with it. I, I like the comedy aspect that we get more from Kumiko, the you know spider character, and her kind of just continued adventure within this cave of just running into a variety of different smaller monsters. She actually ran into humans in this episode and learned that, you know, they were a lot higher level than kind of she's already grasped as like what her max levels have been as a spider. Um, and then I, th I think the part of the focus on the other isekai kids within the school, when they were kind of going through their training regiments and, um, the big kind of like peak of this episode was running into that elder dragon, that earth dragon or whatever. Um, right. I thought that was, you know, interesting to kind of see them come together in that dynamic. But the, the ending of the episode was the only thing that I really was like, oh, damn, like, you know, with Faye, the girl who got reincarnated into the dragon and her having that title of kin eater mm -hmm. and that kind of causing like a oh shit type moment um but yeah i mean i know david you mentioned like the the cg kind of uh <laughs> was you're not a fan of i, I don't I just, think you're i just noticed it like it me like you're, you're definitely going to notice it in in this latest episode <laughs> okay oh yeah um <laughs> it just, it just doesn't bother me but just like just all the conversations I have of CG from other shows, like it just maybe know some more in this show with the spider. Yeah. Which I, I was not expecting the spider yet, CG. I thought she'd be you, like 2D. Do you remember Ku the the other dragon that was in the cave? Was that one very CG? I don't think it was. The other dragon? There wasn't a dragon, there was an egg. No, so at the very end of the episode when Kumiko's in the cave and she's being chased by the wasps and runs into the snake, and then there's that level 37 dragon that just pops up. And it was like a name dragon. I forget what his name was, but there were two dragons in this latest episode. There was the Earth Dragon that Faye, um, you know, does her thing to, and then there's the other dragon that Kumiko comes across at the very end of the episode, and she's like hiding from it. Oh man, you know, I completely forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> all good. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. No, I, I don't remember that at all. Um, okay. But I mean, yeah, no the CG is quite noticeable, but yeah, it wouldn't draw you away from the show itself, I think. Yeah, I think there's still enough interest within the larger world at play that we're going to get into, hopefully, in the next episode or two. 
Yeah, I really like how they're kind of differentiating like the the two point of views. Like Kumiko is more of the like comedic uh, side of the show, and it looks like the the humans and I guess Faye is more of the serious uh, uh, lore of, of the show. Um, I I guess with it being shown that when Kumiko got the the Ken Eater title, it was kind of just like played off as like like whatever you know that's pretty cool or funny, and then now that Faye has it, it's like oh man, this is pretty serious. Uh, I'm assuming if people, I don't know if others can see her or is only people who's been reincarnated that can see that title. Yeah, I don't um, know. I don't know if it relates to the appraisal skill that right. I, I assume everybody can kind get. of gets can, or yeah. can get. Uh, yeah, better way to put it. So, yeah, it'll definitely be interesting to see what conflicts having certain titles, certain abilities, like if you go down like a, a dark path versus, you know, light path, quote unquote, in RPG elements, if that opens up different routes and kind of perceptions of people in this world we don't even yeah. know enough about that so yeah no like definitely sure um and i don't know like i don't know if you remember the like last week where i mentioned that maybe there might be like a time skip between kumiko yeah. story and nd stories um I don't, i'm still sticking to it because as of right now there hasn't been any like direct connection to uh the two parties so far yeah i think that's definitely fair so we'll have yeah. to wait and see yeah, I think that's everything for uh, I'm a Spider. So what? So doesn't do anything bad. It doesn't do anything phenomenal, but it gets it the job done, going. you know? Yeah, it gets yeah. the job done and it keeps you interested. So, mm -hmm. okay. So that'll be it for I'm a Spider. Uh, you want to talk about um, Kimono um, Jihan real quick? Um, oh, yeah. Uh, Who, Taylor, do one of you guys want to start? Yeah. So the red hair chick, Inari. Ooh, it's. Uh... <laughs> liking where where how she was designed um yes yes she gives me um hanabe from fire force the one captain who's like very much a dominatrix in terms of like how she treats her subordinates and stuff oh but i like that's this one's designed way better oh I, yeah yeah, yeah. But, but that's just who it reminded me of when we first see her and how she kind of runs the uh the police precinct mm-hmm yeah, uh, no, and it's pretty interesting too, because uh, like you don't really know if she's uh, uh, like a good character or a bad character, because as of right now, they're kind of just, uh, I, I guess initially, uh, both uh, Inari and who's that that detective guy's name? Uh, is it Unagami? I think it's Unagami. Yeah. Is his name? Yeah, Unagami. Raccoon yeah. Detective. Yeah. Yeah. So it seems like they're both uh, like good characters or good people in a sense, but then they're just like had different ways of approaching it, right? Mm -hmm. Like. Uh, Inari's kind of doing it just so she can survive because they do need the uh, like the, the human nourishment that they get from being around them to survive, and I guess uh, like the others the same as well. But then they're just going through different uh, different ways of doing it. Um, but I still believe that she's probably a good character as well. No, um, I, I not sure I, what you guys are getting. I I agree with that. I think, like you said, it's kind of the do the means meet the end type um, viewpoint of kind of how they go about getting to their end goal where, you know, mm -hmm. Inari takes it one way, Inagami takes it another way. Um, I think for me, I really liked the introduction of uh, Kong, the girl Fox, who is, uh, you know, a agent, if you will, of Inari and kind of her character style of how you know i guess it, through some type of rough upbringing didn't really have anybody to rely upon so inari took her under her wing for better or for worse and how now yeah. Kon just does everything for inari and if if inari thinks of Kon in a bad light in any way that just destroys Kon's mental mm -hmm. and that's going to be i think a big part of her evolving you know now at the end of the episode ending up with the uh detective group's crew her kind of pulling away from that mold and coming more into who she is as a unique individual. So, um, I liked, I liked the episode and I, I think it gave us enough that I'm definitely going to continue forward with it. I think the only downside that I would have to say is Kabane again was OP as usual, where he can just kind of, you know, regenerate. <laughs> yeah. Regenerate after having his head cut off and separated from his body no, and no pain, or at least it didn't seem like it really yeah. just mildly inconvenienced him. Um, 
Yeah, I, I don't love that. But I do love the other kid's reaction to it. I th like how he was so grossed out about just the head being there. And he was just so traumatized by having to carry it everywhere. The other guy passing out on site. I just thought that whole little bit was very cute because you would imagine yeah. that they've probably seen a fair amount of gross stuff by this point. But this still got to them. I like Apparently that. Not. It made me laugh. Um, but otherwise, it was okay. Yeah, I think it's kind of similar to I'm a Spider, So What in that it doesn't do really anything fantastically, but it doesn't do anything unnecessarily either. And it gives a good mm -hmm. mix of a little bit of everything that at least is going to keep you hopefully intrigued week after week. Yeah, I got to say, like out of all the characters uh, in this show, I think I like Shiki the best just because of his personality and how he's he's kind of a bro, but you know, he's got to be like like the like the badass. Right. So yep, he's got to be edgy. Run, right. <laughs> But uh, no, like I, I gotta say, I, uh, out of everything, uh, it doesn't do like like anything phenomenal. But I do really enjoy Shiki's character from the show. Yeah, I agree with you. I, He's my favorite character too. Mm. Yeah, um, it'll be interesting to see when we get to see the other. Because I know in the opening, I think there's like a kid who wears headphones, and then another guy who is potentially going he kind of looks like a vampire i want to say or something like that where mm -hmm. i think he's going to become part of the detective crew or at least they allude to it uh, in the opening judging from the background when they showcase the character i think he's going to be like the the super genius computer guy right i'm assuming mm -hmm. i think so yeah. yeah um but i'm also interested of when we're probably going to get to see even though Kabane is super OP already when we get to see what has to trigger within him to turn his hair red and just go like Super Saiyan, basically. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I actually had a question about that, too. Like when she took not about that specifically, but like when mm -hmm. she took that, his amulet life stone thing, mm -hmm. I thought that he had to like had to have that on his neck at all. Times. Yeah, to prevent like, him from changing. That's what I yeah. thought, too. No, he just needed like to have it. Which but he had then why didn't time. he change that one time in that first episode? He, he he had it in his like mouth or throat the whole time. He didn't. What? He never actually lost it. Oh oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> he gave him that good luck charm. That Thank he you. Kind of gave yeah. Him. yeah yeah. And that, so, yeah. The whole point of like, where did you store that? And he's just like, yeah yeah no, well, yeah. Don't worry. Well, I, just, I just got it. Yeah. Don't think about it. <laughs> Magician secrets. I. I did like the little cute part at the end when, you know, they're arguing over what to get for food. Like Akira wants oh, yeah. to get pancakes, Shiki wants to get Chinese, and then Kamenei's just, just like, let's get both. <laughs> but then they're, you know, they get sick after eating both these like really rich and decadent foods. So it, it keeps its cute moments. It's good humor. So, yeah, I like that of, of mm -hmm. the series. Me too. But yeah. Uh, but yeah. And then uh, also one thing we had to talk about, too, is life stones. Apparently it's super rare. Uh, so it makes you kind of wonder like who like Kombe's parents were in a sense right yeah right um because apparently it's if you have that stone you don't need to have that nourishment from being around humans so mm -hmm. um i guess that's gonna be the, the next main point of focus on yeah the show. i'm interested too of like how are they manufactured because it seemed like from inari when she took the life stone from kabane uh -huh. she's just like okay i'm gonna make like a bunch of you know, duplicates or replicas so that I can give this to my Fox family. So none of us have to worry about that human aspect anymore. Right. But we don't know, like, how do you actually make the life stone if it is so rare and sought mm. after? Yeah. Yeah. I'm assuming some type of sacrifice has to go into it. Where, Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Maybe like, it's like, uh, bro, like uh, Full Metal Alchemist. I was just like thinking that stone. something yeah. just horrific like that. Yeah. Show, yeah. <laughs> That's the only thing that I could think of. It's actually the life force of Kaveh's mom or dad or whoever. Mm. Maybe that's what it is. Oh, like Harry Scar and Harry Potter. Okay, right? got it. <laughs> sure, just no. like Harry Potter. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah. No, it'll be interesting to see how like how it turns out. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's all I had. I think. Yep. Yep. All right. I'm good as well. So that'll be it for Kimmy G Han, and then um, you guys want to talk quick about Wonder Egg Priority? How's that show's been doing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you want to take it away, Stratton? Yeah. Uh, sure. Uh, so I feel like I overreacted the first episode so far. Uh, well, because the first episode seemed, uh, I mean, I was like, it was like the story, everything kind of like how it was going was really interesting. It looked very pretty. Uh, the animation obviously is still there, but kind of how they're going about it, it makes it feel like, oh man, it feels like each episode is going to be also, oh, it's almost going to be like a new story, or there's going to be like a new kind of like person that comes in completing that story and it's just going to kind of keep going like that. I'm hoping not for like the full season, 
but it feels like that's definitely what's going to become uh, what it's going to be a very heavy part of the show mm-hmm. until of course like the last couple episodes uh, which always seems to happen where there's a kind of like a main kind of like plot or arc that kind of jump in i'm hoping mm-hmm. it doesn't that's what I, that's like my early thoughts so far yeah i definitely agree with that i think i'm really hoping that the other three girls that they show in the promotional art. I know we met um, the one girl who collects like a bunch of the eggs so that she can either like revive her dead sister faster or as the two like um, scarecrow looking as figures who are playing chess, they were saying like, oh, you know, you could look at it that way, but maybe also she's just trying to approach death faster so she can just join her sister in death or whatever this, you know, next life kind of is. Um, but I totally agree that uh, the hype wasn't as good as as the first initial episode. Um, but I think for me, I'm just hoping that down the road, it gets a lot darker. Um, and that the four character girls have, you know, much more meaningful reasons for why, you know, they can see these wonder eggs and why, you know, this alien or entity or whatever it is approach them in the first place. Yeah. Oh, uh, David, you'll um, the one thing you'll uh, uh, appreciate of this show. Uh, I think me and Taylor both had like huge hella Kingdom Hearts vibes. <laughs> like there's music, there's music that sounded like it, and also like her weapon. You'll immediately think Kingdom Hearts. Wow. I'm not even yeah, lying. You will basically immediately... a large it's key blade. blade. It's, a, yeah, yeah, key it's blade. not a key yep. blade. It's a pen blade. All right. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Pen blade. It, it begins as a pen, which. It, same thing so, happens with Sora. He has like something in his hand, and it just becomes yep. huge. It, exact and same then it thing. A blade of like, a it's a crown it's on like it. a gig, it's a gigantic like key. It's a gig, It's yeah. just like a. a He's gonna have like these different forms of stuff like Sora has, with, like you know. <laughs> but yeah, it was the that. Like, but, yeah. Even the music, I thought like, dude, this is Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> <laughs> So I, so funny. you you'll have to you have to let us know your thoughts. Like darkness and all that kind of stuff, but it's close enough. Oh yeah, sure. That's, that's I mean that might come into play as well. Yeah. I wouldn't be yeah. surprised. But uh, yeah. I'm still I'm still thinking that this uh, alien or entity or whatever, even though he's trying to help people get past uh, get back their lost ones, I think he's going to be doing it for some like again fucked up reason. They're not doing it for what they think they are. It's almost like a um a Madoka Magica type thing, where you have QB who you know is portraying what these magical dudes what girls do one way but as you know individuals who have watched the show learn that's not at all what's going on i can see that happening like pretty easy well, one because we know nothing about anybody else uh just kind of like what they're trying to do where it just feels like they've been told like if you do like these missions that are in these eggs that somehow like i don't know it like somebody will be able to come back to life somehow then yeah. they haven't really explained it like really how that actually happens i don't know if it's like if like if it's almost like a wish that they get granted or what but i'm 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 assuming that even like each episode they're going to have where uh, it's going to be kind of like a new girl or guy that show up in like when they break the egg um if it's just mm-hmm. uh, i'm going to guess we'll get like you know bits and pieces here and there of like kind of like what this all is and uh, and hopefully like have it lead to something more yeah i, I just want to know how the hell are they going to pay for this hospital bill every time they go through one of these um trials or events yeah i was kind of interested too because uh otto i the blue haired girl she got pretty like beat up when she was fighting the um the dance instructor or gymnastics instructor or whatever you know title she has um but it seemed like i didn't when she left the world she didn't have any injuries like she did the first time when she like immediately left the world and then collapsed at the dinner table yeah so i don't know like is it just like the injuries will show up randomly but then you know with the new girl she obviously was in like the icu (laughs) for whatever that whatever the hell happened to her hopefully we'll see what she's been going through right so she seems like she's a badass though if she's taking on, the, oh yeah, if she's she gives me out. again the tie to your point, Threaten of yeah. Kingdom Hearts. She's yeah. definitely like a Riku <laughs> character, and then I'm sure there's gonna be a Kairi character that's just like, oh, love, yeah. peace, all this, <laughs> believe it. This I can't wait to see Goofy guys. Goofy's gonna be awesome. <laughs> right? Oh, please! Sound. I hope we don't get a Donald and Goofy. It does not sound wonderful so far. I want to get your thoughts, though, David. I think I think you have the same thoughts where the first episode because it's, just, it's completely unexpected. It's like, damn, this could be really good. And the second episode where it's like I still don't hate it, but I'm just kind of scared of like like what it's going to become or how they're going to go through the season. Uh, but man, yeah, I, I think the direction is going to be interesting for sure because it's yeah. it's really unique, but it, it lost its effect from say episode one. 
Uh, well, yeah, slightly, but the, the animation still looks so nice. So, like, I'm like, I'm gonna still like see it through because mm. okay. it looks so good. <laughs> All right, but, is that man. it for Wonder Egg then? I really don't have much more because it's like we I don't, don't really know anything. Like yeah, a, we like haven't really gotten much. Right. Yeah. Exactly. They're still yeah, kind of like so. building, either building up stuff or slowly kind of explaining things. I'm not sure. All right. But, yeah. yeah, we'll see. We're good. We'll see what happens for Wonder Egg then. Still hyped. Um, we'll leave it for that. Um, and then I'll leave the floor open if anyone wants to shout out any of the other shows. I always start with Strider with Skate. How Skate? So good. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was going to share that sentiment. All it's right, it's fine. fine. It's kind of yeah. good. Yeah. It, it looked really pretty. It looks really pretty, but at the same time, we kind of, uh, well, we, I think we alluded to in the first episode where it's going to be one of those where it's, it looks nice, be. but yeah, I mean, I don't know what we're really going to be able to talk about. Yep. All right. Any other shows anyone wants to shout out? Uh, uh, I mean, I would, well, I would actually just like to mention if anybody hasn't seen it, but Cells at Work Code Black is really enjoyable. I really oh, like I it. Said, I said there's a catch lot. Up to it too, so. There's five episodes out now, too. Yeah, for some reason, yeah. they released like three last week, so I don't know what's up with that, but. Mm. Dude, they had some pretty good episodes. It was, oh my uh, god, this one of these last episodes, I was kind of like cracking up like a twelve year old boy, like the whole damn time. I don't know why it was so funny. It shouldn't have yeah. been so funny, but they really they did they did a good job. Uh, you'll you'll know it Black, when you watch it. I thought the Black was supposed to be more like serious. Or it is. It actually well. Yeah, it, it was just fairly serious, but it was just that one episode that was funny, and like I also have kind of a twisted sense of humor about some stuff. So there's one aspect that I laughed at that you probably shouldn't laugh at. Yeah. I see, well, I see. Okay, we'll give a we'll give a teaser to you guys and the listeners just if they get if you know if they get interested. But one of the episodes was basically uh, they're trying to get their uh, body to a- achieve an erection. So <laughs> we'll leave it at that. All right. But uh, um, also, oh, sorry. Go no, ahead. No, 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 I was just gonna say, Ku, are you still watching two point four three? Oh, yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Yeah. What did you? I. Right, what do you think about the latest <laughs> episode? <laughs> I. I was kind of just like, uh, all right. Uh, it. It ain't high Q. I'll give. No, it I mean that. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm on the fence of if I pick up, I you know, Doctor Stone everything. and these other ones. I. I might. Yeah. I might. I might drop it. Like, yeah, like something, but for for the general public, I think uh, Doctor Stone would be a better pick over two point four three. Uh, two point four three, it's it's nice, but it's it's very lackluster. I mean, I don't like I said compared to IQ, it's very lackluster, um, and it looks like it's starting to get more focused on the story rather than the the sport itself. So mm-hmm. um, you're not going to get as much action as you would want compared to IQ. So yeah. Uh, but I mean, I'm still gonna watch it though, just because I usually watch all sports animes. So, okay. Yeah. Any right. other shows you want to shout uh, out to? Well, my uh, my very slice of shows that I've been watching. Oh yeah, they, they did a job. Euro Camp. I tried to watch Euro Camp last night. Put me to sleep. We it did fell its asleep. job. <laughs> yeah. Basically, that I bad, felt, huh? okay. No, it's very relaxing. It's very good. Uh, it did its job. I I, I also kind of fairly stayed up, stayed up a little bit too late, but it was. I don't really fall asleep during anime too often, but it did its job for this one and mm-hmm. I'll rewatch it the entire episode. Um, preferably a little earlier. Uh, has I, I, just a random question to you guys. Has anybody dropped any, like up, up to this point, has anyone dropped any shows yet? Uh, no, I'm not just, me. I'm yeah, no. behind. So I can't really, I haven't really dropped anything. So okay. if anything, well, I, I think maybe I watched the first episode of Dr. Ramane, but I didn't keep up with it. So that's the only thing I guess I could say I dropped. Are you planning on, Keeping, oh, are, no. are you playing? I'd rather watch other okay. shows. Like, I'd oh, rather okay. pick up Wonder Egg. So. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I still think it's worth I think so. I, Wonder Egg, I think, is still definitely worth Yeah, watching. there's so much unknown. Uh, <laughs> I, and I know, yeah. And I know, Justin, you said you're possibly dropping that Haiku Wannabe show. Anything else? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, if I'm going to pick up uh, Dr. Stone and then maybe one other show based off of your guys' feedbacks in the next few weeks here, then it's time to start the trimming for sure. <laughs> How about what about you, Ko? Uh, I have I already dropped Lock Horizon, but there's about three or four that I might drop as well. Compared, to, uh, we'll see what happens. Um, it sounds like the, you want to mention the slime week. shows getting that cluster, so maybe I don't know if I'm gonna drop that, but it seems like it's gonna drop in priority for me. I'm still mm-hmm. gonna see it through, but it's uh, it's whatever. Yeah, but I was watching like 14, 15, 16 shows this season, so I mean it, it was bound to happen. So I'm I'm watching 14. Oh, there, there you go. You can join me. Well, I had 15, but I dropped that. Uh, oh God, I don't even remember what it was called. Uh, bottom tier 
person? <laughs> Banji Tomozaki. That one. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't do it. Too much. But yeah, uh, I don't know. Like I said, I, I think giving shows three or four episodes is always enough to make you determine if you want to keep watching or not. Because, you know, going to the double digits of amount of shows that you're watching is it's, it's kind of a lot to to keep up with if you're yeah, a good person. taxing. Exactly. So, so next week or the week after is going to be kind of like the, the drop moment. It's going to be you're, at, you're going to be at the tip of the cliff and do you jump off or do you continue? Yep. Yep. So like I, I said, I about mean, three or four I got going. For me, it's just like, it's just time. Like where we're like, I don't think I'm just going to drop shells or just be like, just not keep up with it or whatever. Or yeah. watch it at some other point. When, yeah, uh, like basically. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Understandable. So I think we'll wrap it up there. So yes. that'd be it for this week's episode. Uh, I want to thank the audience for joining us this week. Thanks guys. Always enjoy talking to you in chat. Thanks chat. Thanks yeah. Tizzle. Thanks, yeah, thanks everyone. Yep. Wanted, uh, shout out to my panel for joining me this week. Thanks guys. Always a lot of fun. Yeah, we had a lot of discussions thanks. this week. For oh, thanks for the new follow too. Yeah. Thanks for the new follow. Yeah. Follow Ray yeah. uh, Ayanami. Yes. Oh, Evangelion. Yes. Love it. So. I we'll caught that even though I never watched it. <laughs> and that'll be it for this week's show. So we'll see you next week. Bye. 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 Bye.